You don't need two headsets on. Hello and welcome to v lovely Vancouver. <laughs> we are here with Play VS and BCSS for the Rocket League Championship Finals for the spring season. I'm here with my man Suplex. What's going on, yo? My man Jordan right here leading <laughs> us in. Honestly, we got a big day ahead of us. A lot of Rocket League to run through, but it, however, it's just a two out of three. Well, it is a best of seven for this <gasps> for this one. So it is a best of seven. Uh, we will have a mm. potential uh, you know, minimum number of matches, four, um, right. all the way up to a best of seven. So uh, these players are ready, waiting in lobby for us, and we're going to be heading down to the action and the pitch very mm. soon. Um, I want to give a big shout out to our host today. We are coming to you live from Home Key. We're back on land. Oh, I love it. I'm I love it. I love it. Look at the setup <laughs> we have setup, here, too. Guys. This is it's, awesome. It's great to be back. We got the paradox <laughs> in the back. Oh, Let's go. You love to see it. <laughs> And, uh, you know, back on land, obviously, mm. it's been a while for Rocket League and, and just mm. games in general. So oh, we, yeah. are, we are happy to be here. And, and honestly, uh, you know, big thanks to our friends at Play VS for, you know, giving us this opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, and then obviously, big big shout out to our friends at the gaming stadium for putting on this production and bringing it all together. Thanks to you, man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> something like that, something like that. No, yeah, truly, not to mention, again, the home key. Like, this venue is fantastic. If y'all haven't seen this whole setup we have here it is so beautiful the walls are beautiful they got couches they got a kitchen for you we got we arcade got cabinets setups. down the way yeah. Yeah, retro setups we got a little bit of everything kicking around mm. so if you're not here uh you should be to be yeah. honest uh come check us out we're Simple you know math. downtown uh downtown vancouver on seymour street so come check us out yeah, yeah um as far as the rocket league goes you know as far as predictions today go i got an opportunity to check out some of the players yeah. Yeah, you are like very huge in Rocket League. I, so. I, I, I have my yeah. moments, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, you know, really excited to see how these teams shape up against each other. Mm. I've seen a couple even score lines. Each team has taken a warm-up match already. Um, so we should see some good games, all mm. said and done. Uh, players are heading down to lobby here shortly, and they'll get they'll be getting started, obviously. Oh, yeah. uh, as you can see, the player cam's there. Oh, yeah, as they get set up. here we go. All right, we are in oh, to gameplay. Let's go. We are in there. Let's go. Is this a warm-up or not? I no, this is, this is in. We are in. Oh, so let's go. We have the Naimo Christian versus WJ. W.J. Moat, mm. and we see Jack back pick up the ball in the corner, pushing it center for his teammate. Ooh. Barking Zebra is able to clear it out wide. Hold up, it's in the air. We're yeah. back towards the red net. Yeah. Big setup here, but a whiff. Oh, a huge whiff. Jack Black's able to keep it down in the orange end, but his teammate's going to rotate back to clear up a little bit of room. Barking mm. Zebra is able to clear it out with a follow-up coming in. Tries to get a fake in. 50 is won by the Nymo Christian squad. Get a shot off, not quite on net. Clearance comes out high and wide. Zebra is out here making saves, just taking it away. Examine games going to the blue net, but no dice. Jack Black is ready on the defense. <laughs> Jack Black looking to play an aerial play, plays it down to his teammate. They get it off the back wall. Mm. Ooh, solid bounce. Get another pop up. Third man's going to take a bounce. In the here. air, not quite at the right angle. That's OK. Ran out of boost. They're going to pick up corner here, try to reset. Mm. Teammates come in. WJ is able to get a clear, but Jack Black is on the defense. Yeah, truly. Is that like an iron wall? The man's got martial arts and defense. <laughs> Something like that, oh right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Kung Fu Panda over here. Mm. As you see, Barkin Zebra is able to get a clear deep into the zone. Shot on net. Oh, just wide. Just he couldn't get a hold of it. Jack Black's able to get the clear, gets a flick out. He's running Picks with it. Oh, oh big demo. demo coming in. Let's go. That was a great clean out. And First also, of the day. We're yeah. only a minute and a half in. Yeah. Negates that boost pickup as well. Mm. 
tech is on the uh, on the follows. Able to play it off the half wall. Wants a backboard play. Can't get the second touch. Jack Black, Black on net. Ooh. Goal. Now, speaking of Jack Black, he's with a skadoosh right away. Let's First go. point of the day going over. Dynamo Christian. Yeah, Dynamo Christian up one nothing on the scoreline. First goal of the day broke the mm. seal, and we are off to the races, folks. Looking good. Yeah, got to feel pretty good over that. First goal, start of the day, warming up, having a little bit of a comfort cushion now. Yeah, We're yeah. able to play the way you want to play. Take Absolutely. your time. Big 50 in the air. Ooh, WJ is able to get it up over top. Mm. Six hands. Wants to play it off the back wall to his teammate. Can't get control. Black, uh, Jack Black's pressuring. Does get the ball out, but is low boost. Both are low boost. Mm -hmm. Six hands. Plays it back to his teammate to get the clear out. WJ. Lots of boost to play with. Looking to set up some kind of momentum here. Oh, gets it over, but Tex on the ready. Yeah, Tex with a great save coming out there. They got to be careful this next one. Nice secondary save as well. Examine, examined, looking to get another clear in. Can't quite get the look they're looking for. Both teams getting kind of feisty now. They're just going for huge shots. Yeah, I'm, I'm really curious to see the passing plays that are going to come out. As we get a shot on net and a goal. Hey. WJ, six hands, <laughs> puts one in. Let's go. Let's go, yeah. I love it because you see the pass over. You didn't think WJ Mullet had that kind of offense ready, but. I, I honestly, that was a really friendly play yeah. by the crossbar there. I appreciate the crossbar for that pass, you know. Mm. <laughs> crossbar is friends for us. And let's, let's see go. if uh, Nanaimo Christian can respond to this. Yeah, now it's even once again. We start back up with two minutes remaining, two minutes 35. What will they answer back with? Jack Black looking to already go for it. He's able to get over two, only one man back, but loses control, who gets a nice pinch off the sidewall, and it's played out. Mm. Has the, oh, Ooh. couldn't get quite on the reset. That was a great aerial opportunity there. He's gonna, wants it all. Gonna need to rotate back to help out on defense as Nanama Christian are storming forward. Over in the red side as well. Jack Black looking to do anything here, but no, WJ Moore just holding it down. Yeah, Barking Zebra looking to get a bump here to clear things out, but Ooh. shot comes in off the back wall. He's gonna play the aerial here. Can't quite get up for it, teammates there. Jack Not Black. enough speed on it, and it's cleared wide. Mm. Good plays by WJ to hold that one out. Yeah, WJ honestly has been looking really solid. Defense, of course, above average, but the offense we have yet to see too, too much of. Yeah, I, th I still think these teams are kind of trying to figure each other out, yeah. see, see, what, see how it feels, see how uh, you know the, the matchups take. Um, you know, we've seen some good individual plays so far. I'm looking for those team plays to really spread right. up over these next uh, couple matches in the series. You not to mention, this is, of course, probably one of their first lands in a long time, I mean. Yeah, and, and honestly, let's let's keep in mind, you know, these kids have been playing on online for the majority of their existence Ooh. in this league. Wow, big demo coming through there. Um, so, you know, the teams are going to need to adjust to the land play and the low ping, and, you know, how that affects your team play is uh, an important thing to consider. Mm. Well, barely scoots over to his, oh, no. Examined games, trying to make it happen, but not quite. Six hands, oh, please. Could not it's get the touch. There. Nanaimo just going to flip over top. You've had plenty of sleep. This event starts at 4.30. Oh, no, <laughs> six hands again loses it to the demo. Yeah, but Nanaimo's Christian's going to have to back up here and get a little more boost and regroup as WJ is looking to get the clear into the Nanaimo zone. Mm. Oh, my. God. Demo after demo at this point. Examine games more blood. Moving forward here. Over with the blue net. WJ looking to have some kind of momentum here. Kick step. It's on the ready, though. In the corner, not too scary, but Blair Parking Zebra catches the angle right in there. No problem. You thought it was over. It's never over. That was a great play off the back wall there, and to, right to his teammate, had the sense to clear out of the shooting lane, and WJ with a 2-1 lead, 35 seconds left in this game. Mm. Yeah, running out of time here. This could be scary for NCS. However, we have plenty of games to go through, so let's take it as a download for now. This is only game one, and let's keep in mind, and Nanaimo could sneak a late goal in here, and we push it to OT, and the series becomes an entirely different ball game. Oh, for sure. Good aerial play by Tez. Can't quite get control. Teammates up for the 50. Can't land it, but does have support on the back line. Gets one touch, but the net is empty. So and a great the demo there to clear out the shooter. Smart play by NCS. Zebra looking to hold it down. WJS has to hold the neutral for just a little bit longer. They're going to need a late shot here. Oh, the ball is up. Does NCS. This, this is off the back wall. The one no. chance they have. <laughs> oh, what a play. <laughs> and WJ takes the first game of the series. Mm. Truly. We saw some really good plays from each player, too. Examine games really clean on the demos the entire time. Zebra, of course, sneaking in those tricky goals, putting them up that extra point for the 2-1. And then, of course, 
examine games. Just man, I can't believe the movement. Yeah, from WJ Moat has been so aggressive. I called them defensive, but all of a sudden, I'm mistaken. They, they turned the offense. I'm very off. mistaken. It, it was impressive. <laughs> I was uh, I was a little blown away by it. So you mm. know, kudos to those guys for uh, you know putting on a show in this first matchup here. Uh, you know, teams are just getting the next one kicked over and getting into our next matchup. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, for this next one, I, I mean, I think Nanamba's going to really have to come up swinging on the shots. Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to need to put some big ones on net if they want to see this, uh, you know, see this go to a full length in the mm -hmm. series. I mean, Nanamba Christian's been showing off some really good quick plays, but in terms of actually cohesively using their entire team's yep. skill set, we have yet to see it, of course. And, but that's just game the, one. The there's the WJ squad taking this first game in the series, yeah. putting themselves up one. They're looking confident. And let's see as we head into this next matchup. Hey. <laughs> yeah, there's a good <laughs> smile. You love to see it. Hey. Yeah, shout out to everyone watching at home. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for checking it out. We're just happy to have uh, Land back and, mm. you know, here for some awesome video games. Just chill at the home key, yo. <laughs> chill. Big shout out to home key. Mm. Not to mention, of course, downtown as well. Great food here. Great food. Vancouver's fantastic. Vancouver like. is fantastic <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Downtown, I mean. you may not get good parking. However. <laughs> however. <laughs> however. <laughs> Speaking of parking, I should probably check mine eventually. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe Give me the alarm set? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, right. my alarm set. We're, we're good, good, we're good. good. We're good. It'll, be, it'll be fine. It'll be no fine. big deal. No big deal. All right. These players are hopping in the lobby. They should be queuing up here momentarily as mm. we get game two underway. Oh, the cinematic here, Lovely too. look at a uh, good old championship field. It's spring after all. <laughs> it is spring, yeah. It does, get does the eggs like on screen. And hey! Here we go. We are in. We need that kickoff. And, oh, great clear out by WJ. That was close. Holy mm. cow. Looking good so far. Carrying it over to the blue screen, though. All of a sudden, examine games. Back on him. We go to the blue net. Tez has got it. Absolute defense. You know you can rely on them. Move back over though. And I'm a Christian. And I'm a Christian. You're under the pressure right now. The heat is on, and all of a sudden, Six Hands has got the ball up the wall towards the net. Set up for the teammate. Barking Zebra not quite ready though, unless it's a late hit. Oh, what a save! The kick step. Oh my oh. God! <laughs> then I'm a Christian. Got away with murder there, as that was on the goal line. Oh. If Zebra had been a little faster, maybe they would have caught that. But because of the delay, Step It was just prepared. All of a sudden, that's what you get. Step It gets the save, gets the goal up one point. And I'm a Christian starting off strong. And that is how you turn around the momentum. Mm. From one end of the field, huge save, gets a little momentum from your team, get one, two quick passes, yep. and all of a sudden, we're up one nothing. Oh, yeah. Also, while they're on the offensive, right, WJ Mott is not ready for that kind of reversal yet. I mean, no. we're only in game two. They have yet to be able to react to what Nanamo Christian is really going to be able to deliver here. Looking good. Back towards the blue net. Yeah, big clear into the blue zone. WJ looking to get some pressure on here. They got two, two deep right now. Ooh. Barking Zebra's looking to get a turnaround, get a little control. I like it, but Step, it's also on the ready. Oh, oh trying for the air counter, but no dice. That was a great play there as we're going to get another Ooh. goal. Jack Black sneaks one in. Oh, I, no. I don't know what happened to the defensive line there. Was it just an overcommit? Oh, the like double it, yeah. commit. Oh, couldn't get enough of a touch out. The third man was able to clean it up. Everyone Tough wants play. to fly Tough away. Play. Yeah, and, and you got to be careful of those double commits. Mm. Those come out and bite you. Um, you know, your, your teammates are left hung out to dry with no yeah. support and empty net. That's what happens. Oh, yeah. Got to get those comms on deck. Mm -hmm. 2 nothing for Nanamo Christian. Ooh. Three minutes and 30 seconds left in this game. Still plenty of time to come back as WJ is mounting their first offensive of the game. Yeah, they definitely learned a valuable lesson here in what has happened in the last few rounds. So now let's see them adapt. Absolutely. Going for it. Oh! Zebra at yeah. the ready. Good 50 up by Zebra. Gets a shot just wide. That was a great, great look off the corner bounce there. Six hands, though. Give me a second chance. Oh, demo, the demo in front. It's too easy. Examine that games. That is what we call a <laughs> tactical demo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was beautiful call out there. There you go. You see the tail end of that demo, mm. and it, Examine Games is able to get up in the air and bury that in the net. We have 2-1 scoreline, 3.08 left. Damn. WJ answering back swiftly and accurately. I mean, this is how it's done. You know, uh, if, if you don't come back quickly, you're going to lose a the scoreline, then all of a sudden it's going to be a Brazil yeah. before you know it, right? <laughs> you know, it's easy to think of this game as a bit more slow-paced at times. Oh, my but God. But at the same time, in those 10 seconds of defense or offense, that could change the entire set. Yeah, I, I find this game mirrors the momentum swings that often you see in uh, hockey and other games because oh, it's yeah. all over the place. You know, it just takes one play to change the momentum as... WJ is looking to get it deep into the Nanaimo Christian zone as they try and counter in the midfield here. Kick Kick step. Boost. Yeah, he's going to take it up. He's got a little Ooh. bit of time. Let's see if he can get control. Gets over <laughs> one. Zebra gets can't over keep two. up. 
Can he get one more? No, does lose control. He's going to have his teammates follow up there on the second. Oh, Jack Black, though. Serving it up for Tez, but no dice. No, couldn't get the connect there. Six hands, Ooh. running it all the way, Weird but flip. Steph is ready. Oh. Oh. Crossbar and out. No way. I can't believe that didn't go in. That was a great <laughs> late touch there mm. by the w WJ squad, but they just couldn't quite get it in. Just barely a save. Yeah. Whoa, moving forward. Uh -oh. Again with Huge the fakes in the mid here. <laughs> <laughs> Six hands looking to set something up. Gets a flick over top of one. Oh, my Whee! God. Right out of the corner. Oh, WJ. <laughs> That's two back-to-back -back tough it. ones. They need it so bad, but they can't quite close it out. Oh, my goodness. As the pressure's mounting here with only a minute 50 left in this game, WJ needs to get one on this board quickly if they want to tie the series up. You can tell how much they want it too because Zebras is going crazy for flight attempts. Yeah, and here we go. Zebra wants Whoa! another one and buries it. The dunk. Let's go, Barking mm. Zebra. Dunk it on him. Let's tie that score line up. We're back to you know a 2-2 or a 0-0 game as a great play over top of the Nanilo Christian squad yeah. there in front of the net. That was absolutely huge. Zebra was looking a little too overcommittal at times, yep. getting two whiffs off in that one little bit, but redeeming it like that, you're on the clear. Absolutely. No worries there. Six hands. Misses the touch there, but his teammate's able to get it out. Jack plays it back to kickstep it. Wants to get another touch out. Woo! Backflip, no quite. Not quite in the right space in there. Six hands, setting up for the team. That's a dangerous Ooh. touch up from our post. That scares me. No, yeah. thank you. I saw it hit the rail on just no yeah, test. Yeah, no, no, Don't no, no, do no, it no, to no. your own team. Not like this, not like this. Not at the land. <laughs> they can actually hit you for that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a minute 10 left in this series. It's still tied up 2-2. Mm. And remember, folks, at the end of the game here, you have zero seconds. Uh, the time does not end until the ball touches the ground. So there's still an opportunity for these teams to take a late lead or a late goal to secure the series before we head into overtime. Oh, yeah. It's always so interesting, too, to see when that happens because the hype levels that occur when you see the ball just <laughs> yeah, not absolutely. dropping for 10 <laughs> seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, it uh -oh. gets crazy. Dangerous ball here right in front of the net. WJ is able to play out, get another shot. See, Barking Zebra with a huge save. That's what Nine Christian has to take notes on because you saw how WJ just formed a wall with all three of their players. Yep. So Smart effectively. Ooh, Jack Black loses it on the boost, buffs another player into it. Oh, As Zebra's this, gonna no. break away! Oh, <laughs> Zebra! Oh, what a capitalization on a mm. missed touch there by Jack Black. Just couldn't get enough power on, his teammate went wide for boost, and all yeah. of a sudden, that's a slow roller right into the net. Damn. WJ up 3-2 to two with 30 seconds left. Can Nanaimo Christian respond? Yeah, I mean, Barking Zebra, they must take their hauls because their throat is clear, they're playing smooth. <laughs> very, very smooth. As you see, a tough play in the corner here. Jack Black's going to try and play it back to his teammates, get a little bit of ball control and boost control. A little Looking fake in the corner. W does pick up boost. Gets over top, but gets bumped by his teammate. That's a rough touch there. Just couldn't get up. Oh, what do you, you got? What do you got? Oh, my oh, God, interception. Oh, that's a rough 50. WJ, good, though. you know. Get their Nanaimo Christian's got to get it down to the far end here and get a shot on if they want another opportunity Deja to take right this now. match. Can't this get the pinch out, and I think this is going to be it, folks. WJ is going to go up 2-0. Mm. Absolutely fantastic play from WJ. Again, just taking that lead back, holding it down. Deja vu from first game. And, and honestly, you know, mm. gr great composure. Honestly, yeah. on the on the field there, you know, there's a couple tough moments playing down on a yeah. loss it early in scary. the series. It got scary. Yeah. It definitely got scary. So, you know, kudos to those guys for, you mm. know, keeping their composure, putting some good shots on net, and let's see if they can bring it into this next series and put themselves on match point. Yeah, yeah. Also, not to mention, of course, NCS have been playing so good on their offense yep and their defense has been really solid too but their capitalization again as a team is not quite formed yet whereas we see some from wj moat we're seeing huge passaways yep. and huge breakaways and awareness the from moat that just you can't replicate yeah those over commits mm. you know they, they they're tough and mm. and then on top of that you know when you have two three players committing you know it leaves your back line wide open yeah. which is just dangerous to yeah. be honest so Look, uh, you know, they're really going to have to change up their game strategy here if they want to see, uh, you know, a, a change to uh, the, the score line here. You know, it's yeah. only 2-0 two, uh, two right now in the, in the score line on the series. So, oh, you know, yeah. I, I expect to see some, some more play from these oh, guys. Oh, we got that chapstick for today. Mm. Keep them moist. Ta chapstick is critical. Thank you very much. No chap lips <laughs> yeah, no on chap this lips. stream. No, sir. No chance. And then I'm a Christian. Christian. They're getting some coaching right now. Mm. They're, they're, uh, they're getting a little word from their team, you know, trying to pull things together. They want to they at least make this a 2-1 series. Oh, of course, and mm. hopefully give them a chance to uh, you know see what this next one uh, see what this next one gives them. Surely they can run it back. I'm sure. Surely. I'm sure Surely. they can. Look, these have been tight games so far, honestly, mm. and and I, I don't expect that to change. All said and done, no. Um, you know, and here we go. <laughs> Off the touch, NCS at the disadvantage right now. Six hands. 
but they're all ready for it. Yep. Oh. Oh. oh my god, Tez! <gasps> no! <laughs> Tez with the two posts it out for the first shot of the game. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, oh no. Jack Black going for the center. Kick Betrayal. steps looking to follow it up, but can't quite get there. Kick steps able to clear it up high and wide. Might get another touch here before Barking Zebra is able to clear it out. Up the wall, back down toward the NCS goal, but kick step more than ready to initiate the offense. Yeah, kick step wants to get an advantage here. He wants to get a center, but Tez might be the player to get it. Oh, Can't no. get the touch. Oh, brutal roll off the wall Six there. Six hands going for a run, but kick step again is in the air. Whoa. That's way over top. A big leap. But no one's ready to capitalize. No one's ready. No one's ready. Jack Black letting get control, but Barking Zebra's in, gets a center. Nice touch over top as we see a 50 in the mid. Is that on? <gasps> no, oh. just wide. And is oh that my also oh, just wide? Games wants it so bad. Oh, back to back, wide post shots, very close there as we see a challenge coming up in the air. All right, kick step, more than prepared. Kick step, I think, by far has shown the most awareness in this match. So I, far. I think so He's far. Been I so agree. fast on reference to every situation. Yeah, another big save coming up from Jack Black as they both shut down the post option there. Wants to get Ooh. a ground pinch. Ooh, Barking Zebra's able to read that effectively. Gets a back pass to his teammate. They're Oi, not effectively lead, on the landing. Go back to respawn. We're going to try that again. Uh, <laughs> Examine Games is looking to get a backwards feed here. Ooh. Can't quite get the touch that they're looking for. Jack Black going for the center. Getting Tez aggressive. is up for it. Uh, it's a little wide there, and a good challenge out from WJ to keep that wide. Got a shopper running up the wall right now. Oh, kick step. Again, ready to contest every situation possible. Yeah, Kickstep is looking solid here. Is able to get some control. Has a little oh. bit of boost to work with. Not a lot, though. Six hands. Ready to initiate again. Yeah, Jack Black. Take it back over. Ooh, that was a weird pinch off the wall there. Might Ooh. go center. Barking Zebra. Who's does got it? Jack Black's got yeah, it. Does not have enough boost to get catch up there. That was a great opportunity, though. And, you know, mm. kudos to Nanama Krishnik for keeping that one out. Jack as, Black, no. As Kickstep. Oh, my zebra. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you can't scare us like that, Zebra. Yeah, seriously. Come on, guys. Keep it off the crossbar. Like, let's keep yeah. it above board here, guys. <laughs> I know you can play like that. You have the potential to play like that. But let's Absolutely. keep the part rate a little bit lower. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> As Jack Back looks to get up on a challenge here. Is that on net? Ooh. No. Six hands. The oh parabola shot for today. That's a crazy half wall read on the uh, aerial there. Good touch. And just look how this comes oh, straight yeah. down off the crossbar. Yeah, you, uh, Kickstep's got to leave the net earlier on that one. That's just a tough, tough read. The feel bad for on that one, yeah. As WJ takes a one nothing lead in this third game. Mm. We're back on the kickoff here. Into the air. Jack Black. No examined game. Didn't even see him behind the ball. Yeah, he was hiding back there. That's, that's you know, hide and seek uh, with Rocket League, so to speak. Mm. <laughs> Moving As back towards WJ Moe's net. Examine games again, prepared, but... This is wide and this is high. No. Can anyone follow no up? No one was ready on NCS. Yeah, where was the NCS squad on that? I, I expect at least one to pressure. Yeah. Interesting. NCS is going to need to pressure this ball if they want to get a tied scoreline here and Our push this. rolling it over, but... Oh, my God, a demo. Good demo on six hands. He's going to be back to respawn for a few seconds, but it's now back in the game. Can't get the oh error read. Oh, no, Tez. Tez with an awesome read off the little mm. bit of a missed pass there, I believe, by Kickstep. Yeah, examine games look who he was going for, it, but not nah, yeah. Six hands just wasn't just barely not close enough on that defense, and all of a sudden Tez has evened up the score for him. NCS, of course, not out of this yet. Even scoreline, minute 50 left. Let's see if... Well, Ooh. big 50 from Jack and Barking Zebra as Kickstep is able to clear it in. Contest Tez followed up. Oh, Zebra just barely able to contest. Yeah, great play by Zebra to keep that out and wide as that was looking like a dangerous ball for a second. But Jack mm. Black is keeping the pressure on, and I believe the WGA squad is low on boost here. Ooh, six hands. Again, trying to roll with it. Tries to get a bit of a ground pinch. Not able Kickstep to replay. Do it. Jack Black can. Jack Black always can. <laughs> if anyone can, Jack Black can. <laughs> As Jack Black does get a flick over top, he's playing it to the mid, wants to get it past his teammate. Try to mix him up with the movement, but six times I was not falling for it. That was a good bump, though, to disrupt the uh, the WJ defense there and uh, keep things a little wider. Mm. Good aerial read to play that over top, but Zebra WJ gets control. control. Ooh. Barking Ooh, Zebra can't read that off the corner. That was a weird bounce off the corner. Oh, right? Tess is going to take you for a ride right now into the corner. <laughs> and that Towards might be... The net. That's a dangerous ball. Jack Buck popped up, up high into the middle. No one's got it. No one's got it. Tez. Oh, Tez can't Tez get it. Just can't a little do wide. It either. Does Jack Black follow up here? Gets a bump. Great kick bump. Step. Oh, oh yeah. kick step with the follow. Let's go. That is another tactical bump, baby. Yeah. You love to see it. Yeah. 
God, look at the way. Yeah, Tez with the yeah, tactical bump in the corner there, Ooh. clears up the slot and just buries it. Kick step, great goal. 2-1 for Nanaimo Christian. This is the comeback we mm. needed. This is the this is the series, you know, we're looking to see that change up, a little more offensive play. They've been a lot stronger the defensive here. Yeah. And with only 37 seconds left, time is running out for WJ to put another series on the on the scoreboard for themselves as we might see a 2-1 scoreline come out, just like the scoreline in this game. The sweat beads are forming, the hands are getting sweaty. But all of a sudden, I'm pretty sure. Ooh, ooh. Jack Black was this close. And I mean this close to lining that one. He went bulleting into the net. <laughs> Six hands again. Over towards high above WJ. Bouncing off the wall. Ten seconds left on the clock. Jack Black. NCS as a team. All he got to do is hold it down just like WJ. Take a note from their book and take this game right now. Get it on the ground. Game. Mm. That's all she wrote, folks. Yeah. And I'm a Christian. Puts one on the board. We are a 2 1 scoreline in this series. We have a real match going on. We have on right a real now. matchup going. <laughs> you love to see yeah, it. <laughs> Honestly, if it's not at least a 4 2. <laughs> look, we, we were expecting look, good look, matchups. Look for some high scores. Yeah, oh yeah, we're absolutely. looking for a lot of look, games. If here. I'm being honest, I wanted to go to game seven. Of I want to see more Rocket League. Of course. I'm here for the games. Yeah, exactly. If anything we love as casters, it's long <laughs> games. <laughs> that long that games. is true, yeah, yeah. Long games and hauls. And, and you know, to Nanaimo Christian's credit, you know, they mm. put a big game up on the board there. Yep. The momentum's in their favor. Things may start to turn around substantially as we get into this next matchup. You know, as you see the squads there mm. prepping for this next game, you know, WJ is going to have to figure out what is the difference maker in this matchup for them. Who are they going to yeah. have to pressure? Who are they? What differences can they make? Mm. Who is going to be the person that's going to step up and take them to the next level? I want to mention as well, WJ has not leaned back this whole time until now. <laughs> and they're just now like, okay. Ooh. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> and, and then what I'm happened? And then I'm a Christian, you know, look, looking solid. That's a yeah, big game on the board for them. Backs off the back rest. They're Absolutely. not using that lumbar support whatsoever. Oh, they are in. They, they are gamer <laughs> pose. Yeah. That is 100% the reality of that. Yeah, yeah. If you don't see a back between the, you know, the gap between the exactly. chairs, you're not trying hard. Exactly. Enough, really. <laughs> this is a championship. Come on. You got, yeah, you got provincial championship. Banners on the line here, mm. folks. Bragging rights. It's a big deal. And look, uh, you know, these two squads battled throughout the, throughout the uh, semester to, you know, make it here. And, mm -hmm. you know, just happy we can bring them back to land. Yeah, you handle schoolwork. Now you handle this. Yeah, good absolutely. to go. Absolutely. As players are getting down into the matchup, getting lined up for kickoff, and mm. here we go. Well, we get dusty out here. <laughs> As we take a little step into Farmville, which is, you know, a little fun little map that, uh, you know, is a great time to be on. Mm. And I love that uh, that oak tree. I think it's an oak tree. It's beautiful. It's just gorgeous. I, I mean, I, every time I go on this map, I'm like, I oh. can't wait for Rocket League and Unreal Engine 5. But let's not, get, be a thing? Let's not get distracted by that. Isn't it? I'm a Christian. Needs My to brain this is getting blown right now. Out. What? <laughs> I, okay, that'll be the same. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. anyway. We'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. Mm. Nanaimo Christian is able to get a pressure on here. Only one player back for WJ who's able to clear it out. Six hands, great read on the wall there. He's looking to get a little more control. Jack Black coming in for the pressure, gets a decent bump out, mm. but does not leave the orange corner there as Barking Zebra is looking to get another clear. But again, kick step, it keeps it in their zone, is trying to drain the boost of the WJ Ooh, squad. Ooh, Tez more than ready. I want to mention real quick, one little mini tangent. Yeah, go tangent. NCS has been playing so haphazardly yes. in the past couple games. Kind of like a lot of good defense, offensive moments, yep. but nothing too consistent. However, their engagement with how WJ is playing, their adaptation and their understanding of how they like to move, how they like to engage, has been only getting better and better. And you can tell by how they intercept. Absolutely. You can see mm. the synergy coming out from the different squads. And you know, it, this is the right time to be coming together. There's a great save coming up from Kickstep. That was a cannon on net. Mm. And the great 50 afterward on, on Examine Games forces that ball high wide. Mm. Ooh, ooh, dangerous back touch. That's Tez not, not look ready. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a, hey, hello, folks. I was not ready for that pass. You got to call yeah. that one out. <laughs> so Tez gets a nice touch. Can't quite get it centered. Oy. Demo comes out. Examine is gone. Yeah, Jack Black looking to feed this one up. Ooh, bad touch out. Oh, can't get over top of the defender there. So we're still buried in the orange corner here. Yep, six hands rolling it out, but... High ball, let's see who reads this here. Kick step, it's going to be the first one up. Oh, it's so fast. Yeah, it, it, honestly, you got to be the first one up on these aerials if you're going to win them. Most of them end up at 50-50 otherwise, so... Mm. Look, uh, you know, that's great shot on Ooh. by Jack Black, and Barking Ziba is there for the save. Looking good. Move it down. Now, now Christian choosing to engage here in the corner, but examining games again, just the iron wall right now. Yeah, again, another great, great shot by Kickstep. Uh, you mm. know, putting that in wide. Or, uh, yeah, Kickstep it. Uh, <gasps> little miscommunication on the back line here. <laughs> Someone's got to pick that up, please. Yeah. For the love of God. Okay. Tez is gone. Oh. Examine games is gone. Yeah, by Examine Games. We're just going to try that again. And yeah, Six Hands is also gone. So uh, they're going to respawn, and Tez is going to try and clear this out. Ooh, a awkward Zebra. pinch. He's able to keep it in wide there. See if he can get it centered here. Can't quite Ooh. get the touch out. 
Oh, six hands looks so ready for that. Great 50-50 by Jack Black to keep that out of the net. Mm. As we get another shot towards the net, can't quite get there. Jack Black's looking to get control of the ball. It's bumped out, kick step it, kick clears it up step. wide. Examine games popping it high though. Tez trying to live up for his team. But Examine game is rolling on over. Jack Black is gets a weird corner touch that puts it out wide. Is able to play your teammate. <gasps> Dangerous <laughs> play and kick step it with a huge post save as <laughs> Tez is on the back line looking to clear this out in a hurry and put it down. I can to hardly the WJ end. Tell if kick step reacted to that one because he was already flipping <laughs> before the ball got thrown. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> as Examine Games is gonna head back to respawn as WJ is looking to mount a little more pressure. We are over the mm. halfway mark in this game with only a minute 50 left. I wonder who's going to get the first goal in this game. I, I like how long it's taking because you can tell that both these teams are trying to get a really good feel for how they play. The tension and is building. <laughs> that kind of tension between teams is what makes competitive LAN events so fun. Absolutely. Because you start to get a really good feel and start to understand and learn about your opponents. Absolutely. As we see a good shot on there by Examine Games. Can't quite sneak it in and get that third touch in. Was tight, but gets a nice touch from his Ooh. teammate. Oh my god, that was dangerous. Jack Black looking to get a clear here as the 50 is going to come out. It's 50 wide off the orange sidewall. Drops back into the mid. Dangerous ball here. Does NCS have a solution for this problem right now? This never-ending neutral between teams? Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, WJ's oh. had good pressure, but I don't know if this is going to be enough as we see a great shot on there. And Six Hands is there for the save. Mm. WJ Mon, you got some answers? The offense going in, Examine Games going high. Pushing it over towards mid. Barking Zebra looked ready, but Tez is even more prepared. Yep. Locking him out, no problem. That's a good read on the 50 there. It's kick step. It looks to get a clear here. Puts it out wide to the far half wall. Teammate plays it off the high wall. It's going to drop down to ground level here. Good ground pinch there to put it back into the blue zone. And I'm a Christian looking to get a clear here. Tez with a denial. Tez with a denial. Jack Black trying to get that 50 out. Can't quite get the touch. And a huge touch by Examine Whee! Games. Sets it up for six hands, and that's a goal. WJ up 1-0 with 30 seconds left. Show some love. Six hands is putting in some work right now. Six hands looks like he's playing with six hands. I'm going to tell yeah. you that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My man's got potential dexterity reactions. Yeah, all, all the pieces of an important Rocket League player. Mm. Is, uh, Dynamo Christian's going to have to put one up on the board quickly if they want to put the, push this to a 2-2 series. Mm. Kick step. Trying to initiate something immediately, but again, WJ Mont, their defense right now is getting too solid. They've warmed up. Yeah, Three clearly. games in, both these, team, both these teams are more than ready to start giving up a real fight. Absolutely is. And I'm a Christian running out of time. 15 seconds left on the clock. Teammates up, ready for it. Jack Black, oh, six hands with a great clear. As that's going to clear more time off the clock. We're in the last oh. 10 seconds, folks. NCS, we let them get away with it again? You just copied their technique last round. Closed it out, no problem. Do you have a solution? Can you keep this up? No! And WJ oh. comes in with a late touch to just clean out the game. Six hands, great MVP, you know. Mm. Obviously, power hitter, wow, that's a fast, fast goal. Sheesh! Right? Sheesh! <laughs> <laughs> I swear. Well, we're on match point. Yeah, That's a, all of a sudden. <laughs> all of a sudden, it's crazy how that happens, right? NCS, you want more games? or I don't know, yeah. Let us know you in chat, you know. <laughs> Type it in chat, let us know. Look, gotta work uh, for it now. Yeah, WJ yeah. is going to have to put up a big game here if they want to close out this series. Mm. And Anama Christian on the back heel is really going to need to step up if they want to make this series go the distance. Yeah, I mean, if anything, you need to keep in mindset as a competitive player in this kind of environment as well. In a long set, when it, you have a four to seven and you have so much time to work with, you need to make sure you optimize not only your adaptation, mm -hmm. but also your motivation to play more. Absolutely. Your stamina matters so much in an event like this where you could be playing for another 30 minutes because, of course, we have yeah. potentially four more games. Yeah, depending, potentially. On, depending on the scoreline. We'll see yeah. if we go the distance or not. You know, Nanaimo Christian is looking ready and rare, and I, I think they've got it in to take that yeah. matchup if they need to. Yeah. And WJ is really looking to just close this out in a hurry and say, you know what? We're done and dusted. That's all we're going to do today, folks. Uh, mm. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. You know, <laughs> this go is next. Rocket League. Anyway, <laughs> leagues up next. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, and for those folks wondering, uh, mm. we are going to have a little bit of a downtime after this series as we set up our League of Legends players, and they'll be competing in a best of three series uh, with League of Legends. So stick around for that. Well, a lot more gaming oh, yeah. to watch, obviously. And uh, these players are hopping down to the lobby waiting for this next matchup. We're getting there. We're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. But no, NCS, yes, they've been playing really solid. But again, their engagements and their ways of interacting with the other team in terms of their offense has been so good. We're in it. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. But we Here need we go. more <laughs> cohesiveness, Absolutely. standardization of how they're trying to play these sets because <gasps> never mind. Never, no, mind. never mind. Never they're, mind. They're, never they're mind. Here, they're here to play. <laughs>
and I'm a Christian. Sit up in your chairs. Uh, they want four more games. They want four more <laughs> games. <laughs> I want four more. They want four more. We're all want four more games. Oh, yeah. As we are four seconds in, we have the first goal of the match. <laughs> Let's go, NCS. Start it off strong. Catch them when they're not ready yet. Because WWE Moss, their defense, once they're built... And it's that's another one! Whoa, Jack Black! <laughs> I'm trying to talk about this game! <laughs> Let me have my conversation before you score. This is yeah. disrespectful, that please. Was, that was five seconds. That was five. Literally five seconds. Literally five seconds. Jack Black with a great read off the corner bounce there. That little corner wall where it mm. scoops up there, you get such weird bounces coming off there, and to be able to read those effectively puts you at such a significant advantage over your opponents. Mm -hmm. As another almost Whoa. crazy center almost Tess gets... won it all. He won, he won everything. On that. <laughs> <laughs> and Jack Black is on the back line for a great epic save. Wow, good good read there. Way to read that aerial. Examine games can't get up quick enough, but does get control. Six hands does get control. Plays it into the corner. A little bump coming out. Jack Black's going to be able to clear it out off the uh, ceiling. NCS. Keep moving now. Don't slow down yet. Don't slow down yet. You got lots of game time left. This is, yeah, I mean, this is Rocket League, man. Mm. You got more than enough time to get a comeback here. Yeah. <laughs> Much more than enough time to extend your lead. Yeah, you have absolutely. a two-point cushion. Yeah, two-point cushion is a great place Make to it a bigger it. cushion. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Make a whole bed. Make wow. a beanbag. Did maybe. you see that play by Kickstep? He nice. plays it off the crossbar and then reads the the bounce off the crossbar. That's how you know this is professional rock. Oh, Tez with a nice save. Great it's save. a professional uh -oh. rock league. Because they're playing the crossbar, <laughs> and Barking Zebra does not care about the crossbar. He wants right in the net. No, absolutely. And look, uh, you know, great kudos to Tez on that second first read. The teammates mm. got to follow up on that play and get at least a 50 out there. Otherwise, Barking Zebra is going to come in and clean that up every single right, time. Right, right. Yeah, WJ is only getting more and more cohesive with their team plays. And Anima Christian has been better, getting better and better at their offense and defense individually. Yeah. But as a team, they have yet to really show some really strong plays. Jack Black looking to get some control here. Doesn't get it. Barking Zebra gets a touch out wide, but Tez puts it in Ooh. center. Ooh, good 50 coming out there. WJ Mode is picking apart their plays. And WJ has been phenomenal on the defensive line. Being able to push mm. the ball out wide and just make it a, you know, a, a, a moot yeah. question, to be honest, as this one ending up in the center, but Barking Zebra is there for the catch, as Ooh. this one is on net. And look at the passing. Oh my goodness, Examine Games. Oh, so the touch by Examine, yep. that's a good old-fashioned give and go, folks, and we are going to bury it's that so one in good. the corner. Let's go. It is 2-2 two -two on the scoreline. <laughs> Nanaimo Christian started off so explosive, and now it doesn't matter. Does not that's matter. That's crazy. Does not matter. As oh, we are man. still on match point here, folks. WJ could close out the series right here, or Nanaimo Christian could extend us to one more game as we are tied at a 2-2 two -two scoreline with 3 minutes and 15 seconds left. Mm. As, as, ooh. They started off so strong. They've had two minutes about that to properly analyze what's going on in this game. You have the resources. Now apply it to your game. Apply it to your game. Let's see a big goal here. Jack Black Lennon gets a 50. That ends up floating center. Kickstep is going to come up for the challenge of Six Hands. Does lose that challenge. Six Hands does get control. Oh. Gets one more touch in the <gasps> center. Tez was not ready, but Jack Black was. Oh, it's all good. The power of two. The power play. of a duo. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Kickstep it is 50 here by six hands. Someone mm. else is going to have to follow up on this ball as Jack Black is able to clear into the WJ end. WJ does read that backboard touch as Kickstep it wants to put it back in their end. All right, Examine Games again, trying to move it forward. But number no, question again, you see them one by one going in, but they just can't quite solidify their way through WJ Moa's team play. I really do like their rotation. I'm going to be honest with you. The support mm. is there. What I'm not seeing it necessarily with WJ, they have a lot of individual play that comes out unsupported. Mm. But Nanaimo Christian has the support there. It just needs to be quicker and snappier. I see. They're, they're just late mm. by about one to two seconds. I don't know if it's a boost issue. I don't know if it's just a comms or a timing issue. But you've got to have that second player following up quickly while your third is rotating back for support. Is mm. Decent shot on net and Barking Zebra had to be smart there on that save. Looking good. Carrying out of the corner now. Examine Games trying to make this an easy movement over toward the NCS's goal, but Tez wants it. Tez is That's ready. That's off, off the top. Jack Black. And this comes right back down. <laughs> Jack Black gets a good shot on that. That was scary. Holy cow. Moving forward here. Back in 50. Hold up. Jack Black gets control. Gets a good center touch. Examine Games had to be smart on there. Where's the follow? Yeah, Tez on the follow. Another center touch. Uh, good clear out by the WJ squad as Kickstep it looks to play it up this half wall. It's going to go up and play for this aerial. Examine Game's not up quickly enough. Can't get the flip reset as Kickstep it wanted to do something and fancy WJ there. WJ immediately. Oh, never mind. Yeah, Tez is looking to capitalize. Examine Game's isn't there. Wow, dangerous play here. This might Ooh. float center as Examine Game's is smart clear there to get that touch out. And Tez was alone up there. Yeah, that was dangerous for a second there. Yeah. Oh, that's that weird bounce off that half wall. And this is going to float in the middle as Barton Zebra is gone. 
going in against Zebra right now. That you gotta kill the shooter on that one, as you know, uh, mm. that's just too dangerous of a player to leave sitting in the center there. Exactly. Yep. Zebra getting a little bit of an awkward touch here. Yeah, good touch up to his teammate. Exam Games keeps that ball alive, but Jack Black is able to get the clear. We're into the last Ooh. 45 seconds of this match here on match point, and you know, there's a strong likelihood we're heading to OT here, Suplex. Mm. Yeah, I'm a little worried here, Jordan. I'm a little uh -oh. worried. No, I'm a little worried. Oh, no, uh, the caster curse. No. I think because you said it. Because you said it. <laughs> oh man. I didn't want to say I it. I didn't want it. Oh, I shouldn't have said it. The six <laughs> were made. And now the Christian takes a lead, three to two, with 39 seconds left. And apologies for the caster curse because that you, was brutal. You said that, and my anxiety went to 100. Yeah. I'm like, dude, you can't. <laughs> I can't, and I did. And the stakes were made. All right, let's get back to this game and see if WJ can respond. However, this is in uh, Christian's favor. If they can hold this. If it's possible, knock on wood, if it's possible, <laughs> I believe. Uh-oh, crazy shot coming out there. Jack Black rolls the wrong way. Ball is center alone. Kick step. It's in that to cover. The Can he get defender. up for it? No! <gasps> Barking Ziba buries it. Oh, no, the wrong roll oh on my with Jack Black coming out of the zone. Kick step. It didn't get up in the air quickly enough. It looked like he was so tied, ready. Oh, no. We're back to a tight score line. Okay, thank you for not ruining my caster's curse, but also bummer. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, you might be right. You might be right. Yep. Anti-caster's curse, like, initiation. Mm -hmm. But we I'm might be going it. into... Yes, it better! Jack I Black, let's go! <laughs> and a huge goal with 15 seconds left on the clock. <laughs> Jack Black with the berry off the post. <laughs> oh, man, you I cannot make this up if you tried. I didn't even get to finish the sentence. God, don't even bother. <laughs> Who cares? I was going to say overtime, but before I even oh, say it. That sentence is overrated at this point as we have 15 seconds left on this clock. And I'm a Christian wants to extend this series to another game. Examine games has something to say about that. Jack Black gets a clear off the corner mm. wall. He's looking to play it off the wall. Wants to keep this out wide. Again, best defense <laughs> is a good offense. Ten seconds. Five, Estes gets three, another shot on. Can he bury? Two, oh one. my god! And we got another game, folks. And I'm a Christian. Makes it a 3-2 score line in the series. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, amazing plays by Jack Black there. That late oh. goal. And hey, great hat trick as well. You know, top mm. of the score line. Folks, whew, that was a barn burner. And not just because we're on Farmstead. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Like, not. I want to say that it could go either way. It really could. I mean, that was but the tightest game we've seen yet, and we're, what, four games, five games yeah. in the series now? Like, Holy cow. <laughs> WJ has a huge advantage, but at the same time, like, after a match like that, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> what am I supposed to say? <laughs> <laughs> it's my job to have words, and I, had, I don't have any. I don't, I don't, I don't. I want to see the next match. I want to go in the next one. Like, like, I want to see it. I cast your curse into three goals? Like, come on. Yeah. Man, that's, that's not how this works. I was trying to actively not say the word overtime. <laughs> trying to lead up into it with no curse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And before I can even do that, no overtime. No overtime. Oh, oh man. man. They don't want it. They don't want long games. They, they want, want these short, game. explosive yeah. games. They've yep. been fantastic so far for NCS. Absolutely. You can see the bursts of power yep. from NCS. We go over to them. Yeah, yeah. the NCS guys, I mean, look, the tournament life on the line right yeah. there. Ch championship on yeah. the line. The adrenaline yeah. kicking yeah. in. Adrenaline kicking in. They came up big, and you know that was a great, great play by them as we are heading into the lobby for this next matchup. The only question is, how long can it hold out? How because long you never can know it hold out? How, when your adrenaline can burn out during an event like this. Absolutely. In esports, adrenaline gets going, just like any other sport. Mm -hmm. You get to your peak play, Yep. but... Since you're sitting down, it can often run out earlier than you expect. Absolutely. So you relax for one second, and all of a sudden you might be missing your shots. And here we go, folks. But we don't miss a kickoff. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Again, the scoreline is currently 3-2 in uh, favor of WJ for the series as we are heading into game number six. Yeah, BCS has provincial championship here. Yep. The Naima Christian wants it, but WJ... How badly do you put them in the dirt? Uh-oh, heads Ooh. up. Big shot coming up from Barking Zebra, but Tez was there for the corner save as that was looking dangerous for a moment. Zebra getting kind of violent right now, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Zebra's been violent all series. I don't yeah. know where you've been, bro. I mean. No, I'm just saying, like, the way Zebra's been trying to push it further and further in his offense has yep. been just, like, so incredible to see. You Absolutely. can tell that Zebra's definitely, like, one of those players that is uh, initial, like, the most aggressive initiator, uh, similar to Kickstep It yep. on NCS, right? Yep. Moving forward here. Whoa! That's, uh, you're gonna, you, we'll see them in the stratosphere uh, yeah. next game. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jack Black gets a decent center here to I'm test. just like, they're gone. Yeah. I'll see you next series. Thank you very much. It's, oh, they came back. All right, good. Thank, thank goodness you. we have a roof. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, if thank we didn't, goodness. could you imagine rocking without a roof? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I could not. Absolutely not. Oh, good. <laughs> As Barking Zebra is looking to get some pressure here, but Tez mm. is able to clear that out. 
Tez gets a nice there. center opportunity. Is anyone there to follow up? Jack Black is Little off the crossbar. High. Is the follow there? Kick, kick step in. Big follow up by kick step in. Honestly, look at this passing play. Tez puts it in center. They push it off the bar. They get the huge demo on the back line, mm. but Six isn't able to recover quickly enough as kick step it places that ball effectively on the left yeah. side post. WJ looked like they were all prepared to defend there too, but three shots like that, you just can't keep up. No, you can't keep up. I mean, in that kind of passing play, I don't expect you to keep mm. up as then I'm a Christian wants to push this to a game seven if at all yeah. possible. It's fantastic to see how after five games, NCS has clearly sped up their team plays. Clearly, clearly. Like you mentioned how it was going a little bit too slow at times. WJ was picking them apart bit by bit because they were just able to defend on reaction. Yep. But now that Nima Christian's really cranked it up to turbo mode, it's time. Yeah. It's time. Yeah, my uh, car goes to 11, as they say. You know? mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> as Kickstep looks to get controlled, it's going to be sent back to respawn as Tez is going to need to get an effective clear here. Mm. Jack Black is able to access this on the sidewall. Has boost to work with. A Gets nice a reset. Step. Oh, Ooh. not quite. Can't get the reset on the flip and wants one more touch on there, but great 50 coming up from the WJ squad. Looking good so far. Zebra trying to carry it over back to NCS. Needs this offense started now. We don't have a lot of time left. We've already went through two minutes. <laughs> Start playing your game. We are 20 seconds away from the halfway mark. Is a great shot on that comes out. And oh, boy. Step it. Wanted that one, but the WG squad was on their goal line, able to effectively mm. save that out. I thought Examine Games would barely whiff that. But barely whiff that. I was very, very close. Nicely in range. Yeah. That's mastery right there. Tez looking to get control. Kick step Ooh. it. Six hands wanted it, but Jack Black. No, 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 no. Uh -oh. no. That's in. <gasps> That is in all day. Yeah, three men come in. I mean, leaves the center open, and we're up, uh, you know, one, tied up scoreline at this point. And look at Kickstep here, too. You can see him being ready for it. No, He's the, trying to react, it, but... It was the hesitation on the back yeah. wall there that, you know, left him handcuffed on the speed. Mm -hmm. Didn't have the ability to effectively, you know, contend that play, and yeah. all of a sudden it's a wide shot. And when you're, you when you're hanging there. on the wall like that, it's, it's tough. so tough to, like, yeah, be you lose speed quickly. in that save. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. As Tez wants a 50 there, can't quite get it. Six hands, he gets one touch off her top. Can't get the second touch over top, but Barking Zebra is able to follow. Kick step, it clears it out. Mm. And Tez is going to follow this up as we see a huge miss come in from Six hands. That's Ooh, a rare kick Tez. step into Tez. Bring it back now for Jack Black, but no, a big whiff. Uh, Jack Black was there for the follow, just couldn't read that touch off the back wall as Tez is going for a second opportunity here. Wants another center. Ooh, Ooh weird bounce off the corner as no one's there to follow, and WJ is just going to pick this ball up and clear it out quickly. Six hands holding it towards WJ's goal. Jackpot trying to do something for the team, but again, there's WJ trying to interfere as much as possible here. Yeah, Kickstep it wants to get that clearance into the slot, but just couldn't read that ball off the half wall, and it just rolled off the ceiling, came straight back down. Tough mm. read, tough ball. I mean, you know, it do be like that sometimes. It, it do be like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. As Relatable. WJ spent the last minute and change in their own at end of the zone, and not not that many offensive opportunities. Mm. Kickstep had wanted to get a touch over top oh. there. Tez wanted to get a touch over top there. Examine! This might be in. Examine! Examine games! <laughs> Gets the berry. This is huge. Oh, One minute, goodness. 21 remaining. And all of a sudden, the Nightmare Christian has to get a goal to save themselves. And Jack Black wanted that corner boost, but then saw mm. the play developing and just had to sprint back at full speed and couldn't quite get there. Let's see if Nanaima Christian can come back with a minute 20 left if they want to push this to a game seven, or are we calling mm. it a series right here? I hope not, but at the same time, WJ is looking to close it out right now. They're tired of this. They don't want to spend no more time here. They've had their fun. <laughs> go take home your trophy. Yeah, yeah, go take home your banner. Yeah. <laughs> WJ is sitting in good position at this point. It's an anomaly Christian. Bury some pressure. Huge demo Ooh. coming on Barking Zebra. Jack Black has to be back and careful with this ball if they want to re-rotate re it out. The Zebra has been muzzled uh -oh. all of a sudden. Well, examine game. Try to get it in the air. Awkwardly into the corner here. Whoa, big whiff. Yeah, it's just rolled the wrong way. Happens to the best of us. Mm. As Kickstep it wants to get a touch here. Good clearance out there. Effective clear. Uh, that's two over three committed deep into the zone. And I'm a Christian. Know they're on their last legs in the series. Literally. And know they need a goal if they want to extend it. Everything they can try and set up this ball. But again. Huge demo Ooh. coming in. Kickstep has boost to work with. Gets Tie off the right in front. That's in. No, oh, what is that? Oh my no. god! Oh, oh my god! Holy cow! We Kick thought it oh. was over. Oh, I thought it was done. <laughs> I thought it was dusted. I that was unbelievable save. Kudos to Kickstep for following that mm. up and, and bearing the play, but unbelievable initial save by WJ as we are at a 2-2 scoreline. Yeah. 25 seconds left, and I'm not gonna say the word you're all thinking. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm gonna choose an MVP for the day, it's Kickstep. Right, absolutely. right there, you have to get that goal. Absolutely. That was a huge goal and Give uh, Nanamo Christian just a little bit of life in the mm. series. As, ooh, big whiff coming up for Nanamo Christian. Examine Games gets a reverse touch on that pinch. Didn't look like quite what they wanted. Six hands wants to put this on net. 
the flame of life. Kickstep it. Loses that 50. Two seconds left on the clock. Mm. Runs zero second time here, folks. And that's going to be over. Here we go. The first ever time on the set. Is this going to be the end of the series? Are we going to a game seven? Oh Find out right now. <laughs> <laughs> you better tune in. You Buckle better in. tune in. Kickstep. It puts it out wide. Not the touch they wanted. That might be a dangerous setup as Tez is going to have to put that high and wide. And can all oh, examine games can't get the touch they're looking for. Jack Black looking to get a clear here. Gets one touch. Gets a flick over top. Oh. Has space. Oh, loses the 50, but it, it is set up in the slot. Can they get a touch on net? I Just wide. I was getting scared for a minute there because if Six Hands hadn't leaped, I thought when, I thought that might have been it, yeah. An accidental <laughs> loss of a game. Kickstep it. Wants to get control on the half wall here. Loses it oh, to Six, six hands. hands. Taz is up in the air. Okay, gets Taz a good 50. Kickstep wanted a touch there. Couldn't quite get it. Jack Black's out of boost. Off the top wall. It's over the oh. net. Well, man, I this is so I stressful. I see you, Zebra. <laughs> I see you. You're looking hungry. I can see the sweat coming out of the player's hands currently. That Zebra is not a herbivore. No, definitely not. There ain't no way. <laughs> Look at the huge shot here. Oh, okay, Kickstep's ready. Yeah, Kickstep's ready on that save. <laughs> WJ with a good opportunity. First big opportunity of overtime as Six Hands is looking to corral this ball in front of Kickstep it. Six Hands moving it over. But again, Tez, NCS being so fast in the defense and then immediately initiating offense. Yeah, and that's been the quick rotation on their part. Again, they're able to flip their gameplay. As Jack Black gets a shot on net. It's too high. It's there. No! It's there. <laughs> what a goal, Jack Black. We're going to a game seven. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> I, I fully believe. Like, there's no way. It's too slow. It's too high. This. Oh, no, Zaman Games popped it, too. I know. It just wasn't just, enough. Yeah, he wanted the touch over top, just couldn't get enough on it. And oh. I'm a Christian is your winner in game six. And, folks, oh my God. we've got a game seven. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> you love to see it. That was a good-ass overtime. Dude. That was great That was an amazing overtime. I mean, overtime. Look, I, Rocket League mm. overtime is not good for my heart, but great yeah. for my, you know, brain. <laughs> <laughs> As this series has turned out to be everything mm. and more we asked for. That was fantastic. Like, Absolutely. Not to mention, of course, NCS, again, just cranking up the speed Seriously. every game. I mean, look, mm. Suplex, we're in to officially a best of one. This is it. This is the last game. Sudden folks. death, baby. It's sudden death. <laughs> yeah. So whoever wins this game is taking the series and taking the banner home, bragging rights. Oh, yeah. And this will be your spring champion for Rocket League for the BCS. Yes. Let's go. Let's who will be go. the best in BC? Yeah, who will be the mm. best in BC is the question we're here to answer as these players get set up for the last game. Yeah, damn. Look at these players. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> I think it's myself. They're getting ready to go as uh, you see N uh, NCS is, you know, raring, mm. looking to follow the momentum after that previous game. You know, they want to see, you know, major, major plays. Uh, the team plays coming up from them have been huge. Great passing plays as important. you got to get some water mm. in in between the sets there. Yeah, the little water livery. And Huge look, uh, there. you know, d uh, WJ, you know, no slouches. They haven't been playing badly at all. I I've been really impressed oh, with their play. Uh, they just need to work on the team comp a little more. Mm. They need to get some more effective passes through to each other. That's yeah. when those big games come up as they're able to get those touches through. I think where WJ shines is having time to set up. They need that initiation time, not even that pre-initiation time, to properly organize themselves into a place where they can understand what's going on. But the moment NCS can scramble them just like a breakfast hash yep all of a sudden their team just begins to falter just little by little and little here we by go little, the final game to form game in the armor. here we go oh. then Amo Christian is in the WJ end as WJ gets a clear out Tez has something to say about that sends it right back says no thank you we're gonna go back to your end and play ball it's a beach party baby it's a beach party baby <laughs> don't get sand in your shorts now <laughs> Stay comfy. don't get sand in your tires you know ain't no way <laughs> ain't no way it's Barking Zebra gets a nice touch up. It's going to be wide out. Ooh. Tess is going to have to read this effectively off the wall. Weird bounce off the half wall there. That's on net. Jack Black's got to be smart, as that was a good clear out. Woo. Jack Black examine gets, games. Yeah, gets, a, gets a clear out to the far end. Does steal examine games' as boost. Oh, examine no. Examine games is out currently. They're juggling above him. They're just juggling above him. Yeah, kickstep it. Wanted However. to put that center, but no one was there to follow. So Jack uh, Black's yeah. going to have to clear this mid. Wanted that boost pickup, couldn't quite get there in time, but couldn't get to the challenge either. That's an ineffective play as Tez wants to get this ball out and away from the front of their net. It's looking good, Tez. Keep it moving. Whoa. That's a decent bounce. That's kind of what you're looking for as Jack the Black comes Ooh. out. Oh, it off was the so post. close. It was so close. Oh, a huge, huge, uh, you know, post play there. That's a great shot yeah. on the start. Tez with a rare miss on the back line there on the half line as Six Hands wants to clean this up. And Jack Black, it's an effective 50 in his own end to keep that ball alive. NCS possibly nearing the speed limit here. Oh! Six hands. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at the read. WJ. Because Barking plays it up here, gets it over top of Tez, yeah. over rotation, far post, great placement. 
WJ right one nothing currently as we have three minutes and 38 seconds left. Oh, look at him wiggle a little bit. Wiggle with Zebra's it. Zebra's ready. <laughs> Zebra's <laughs> itching to play more. <laughs> Jack Black wants to get it clear over top. It gets shut down by the WJ squad as they want to get a touchdown. Mm. Examine Games was there, but awkward touch out by his teammate made that tough to read. We've got plenty of time on the clock left, but again, both these teams time. definitely want to play as much as possible. They've been having such a good match right so far. 3-3, three, 0-1. Three, oh, like, oh. This has been, overall, one of the most exciting games of Rocket League I'm sure they've had in a long time. Uh, it's been one of the most exciting games of Rocket League I've seen in a while. As yeah. These teams have been battling and know there's bragging rights on the line. As Tez wanted to clear that in center. Who's going to follow this? Kickstep Kick is there, but Tez gets another shot on. That's a little wide. I believe follow in up you, by Tez. Kickstep. Oh, and oh. Jack Flex there for the Barry. We're at a 1-1 one, one line. Three minutes left in this best of seven. NCS. Yes answering back just like that. And I'm not going to lie, that was a scary commit. Look at all mm. three NCS no, players exactly. inside of the orange box. Like, <laughs> that is a scary triple commit. But they knew they needed that goal if they wanted to even up the scoreline. Mm. You can't stop yourself from taking every chance you can get. You can't play defensive now. It's game point. It's it's this point. is it. <laughs> as soon as Jack Black wanted to get that crazy <laughs> yeah. read off the ceiling. Couldn't quite get there, but that was phenomenal. Yeah, MVP for style points, Jack Black. Yeah, yeah, Truly, yeah, yeah, yeah. truly. Style points at the wazoo. That's definitely what we need in Rocket League style points. Oh, Sam Games going with the 360, 720, 1080. Sean McGoal, oh, Jack Black <laughs> with a huge save on the back line there. Had to be yeah. up on the post on the... Uh, Post in the corner there. That I was almost wild. moved my MVP for style to examine games off of that shot alone. Uh, that would be fair. <laughs> that would be justified entirely. The spinner. Examine games. Still moving it forward here. Barkin Zebra wants it, but NCS, again, solidifying that defense. Look at them. Just not committing too much. Ted's going in. Trying to see if we can get anything, but nothing quite to yet. Ted's moving it back. Trying to gain that control. NCS needs some form of safety here before WJ just goes in for a big play. And we are two minutes left in this best of seven as... Oh, Jack Black answers. Jack Black does get a shot on that. A save does come up from six hands, according to the game calculator there, though I thought that was a little wide, in my opinion. But Tez mm. looking to get this corner read. Tries to get it off the half wall. Good clear out there. Jack Black's there for the follow. Just six hands on the right side right now. Jack Black trying to get that wall hit, but no dice. It's a little bit too far. And six hands. Off the back out. wall. And six hands. Buries it. WJ up 2-1. Minute 40 left in this game. Yeah, look at this, too. Six hands. Barreling through. That was, Bye -bye. that was just an <laughs> individual showcase yeah. of how to play Rocket League. The aerial read off the corner, the demo, mm. into a beautiful backboard read for a goal. WJ back on top. Let's see if they can close it out right here. Sometimes it looks too easy. <laughs> but you got to know. you got to understand. These players are still in high school and have put in so many hours, hundreds of hours in this game. Yeah, I challenge, to make sure. challenge anyone in chat to pick up a controller and look like any of these yeah, guys. Yeah, no, I mean, not happening. Yeah. Catch me in bronze, you know. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. As Jack Whoa. Black ties it up, where did that come from? <laughs> oh my goodness! Sneaking in, slithering in. Watch out! Watch out! <laughs> Jack Black <laughs> gets teed up by Tez and is able to get that Woo. far post. Great shot. No one was ready. No Absolutely one. nobody. We weren't even ready. Mm. <laughs> oh, I was not even ready for that one. Two, two, two. two. and <laughs> two. four <laughs> goals have happened, and we got a minute twenty left. Oh, uh, <laughs> Marking Zebra back to respawn. Kick step. It was the touch. Can't quite get there. Tez follows. Help. No, Jack is like, I'm out. I'm not leaving our back line <laughs> wide open in a 2 2 score line, as it might not matter. His mm. kick step, it had to be smart on that save. Jack Black going in the air. Again, with a slight whiff, though. Couldn't get the boost. He's going to pick up corner here and reset. Tez is going to challenge on exam and gets a decent bump out. He's able to pick up corner. One more remaining. And just kind of over committing here. Maybe a little No bit. boost. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a <laughs> save coming out. From the WJ squad, as I f thought for sure that was in. I did not realize how close that goal was. I thought oh they were committing, God. not even able to get a shot off. But all of a sudden, the ball was right there on the goal post. As this could be a 50 <gasps> into the net. Jack Black can't get it under breaking zero. So oh. close. Oh, my goodness. Somebody help. <laughs> There's going to be a heart attack in this venue at some point. At some point. And the tension in this match. Dynamo Christian needs to pick up the ball here. It's a dangerous ball rolling towards the center of their net. Tez is able to clear that out, get a little bit of control. Wants some boost, does get another touch, has 30 to play with. Oh my goodness, he's got the ball. Does steal out from six hands as he's going to be low boost for the rest of the series as Tez is able to pick this up on the back wall. Uh-oh, oh, look at the movement. That's wrong. Look at the movement. That's not good. Oy. You never want to put it to the center of your net with 10 <laughs> seconds left. Please, Examine. no, not like this. Barking Zebra. Oh my god, this is good. <laughs> Don't say it. So. Don't say it. We got. <laughs> so. Oh. It's not Ain't no yet. way. No, 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 no. It's going to drop. We right got there. overtime. Yeah, we got overtime. All okay. right. <laughs> All the marbles on the line. Jordan, are you ready? <laughs> I'm not ready. Not even close. <laughs>
<laughs> then Alba Christian gets a good play. No! This could be it. No! Oh, my God. saved by six oh, hands. Oh, no. Oh, my God. We almost had it in five <laughs> seconds of the OT goal. Can't do that to me to Alba Christian. How Easy does it. How characteristic of that cook step would it have been, though? Oh, my God. No, this five is... Second no! Shot. Nobody's is there! No! Nobody's there! No! <laughs> WJ with the slow roller! What a play! <laughs> oh my goodness! Zebra with the backflip to end it all! Oh, oh my sudden. god! WJ's got it! WJ with a huge <laughs> dub! Congratulations for taking the BCSS Spring Series Championship. What Rocky a treat. Zebra, the, the MVP for your Oh my match. goodness! WJ, I absolutely love to see it. NCS, again, showing off so much strength, so much adaptation. Give it up one more time! For our teams here, truly, what a treat of a match. Gosh, truly amazing plays. WJ closing it out. We looked like they had the overwhelming offense at the beginning. NCS clapped back so confidently, but sometimes you just can't hold it out too much. So we're going to pop over for the banner press. All right. All right. Guys, hold on one sec. You guys, you hear me okay? Hi everyone, my name is Jordan Abney. I'm the executive director for BC School Sports. Just want to say congratulations to everyone for being here. Uh, and congrats for just making it to this game. Hopefully it was a, a good experience for you all and certainly you put on a great show for everybody. Uh, quick couple thank yous first of all. Uh, I want to say thank you to our partners at Play Versus uh, for their support and making sure that uh, we can do this. I want to say thank you to uh, Spiro and his team at the gaming uh, stadium for putting the, all this uh, show together, providing the hardware and the expertise to do it, and uh, to the home key for hosting this event. So uh, without that, uh, without all those people, none of this would happen. And so uh, with that and those thank yous, I want to say congratulations again, both teams. What a fantastic final. I thought you guys were going to pull off that comeback there at the end. Uh, so close, but at the end of the day, WJ Mowat, congratulations. Where's your other guys? Can you guys come, get on up here. Come up here. It's just a, a, a banner here that you can hang up in your computer lab or wherever in the school that says you're the Rocket League uh, BC School Sports Spring Season Champions. So there you go.
Hey everyone, and welcome to the BCSS High School League of Legends Finals. Uh, I'll be one of your casters for this evening. My name is Locus, and this is Ponce. How are you doing, Ponce? Oh, not too bad. A pleasure to be here. Thanks for uh, having me in for one of these things again. We're looking forward to the uh, the finals for the 2021 and 2022 championships. It's going to be, of course, a best of three between Pine Tree Secondary and uh, Seaquam. I've hopefully you pronounced that correctly. I do believe it's something along those lines. Uh, Siakwam is in the building, so thanks for joining us. Do appreciate everyone uh, coming in, and hope everyone has a good time for the uh, League of Legends games that are going to be coming up very shortly. Yeah, so I believe we do have the, uh, the lobby already spun up, so I imagine we'll be jumping into Champion Select pretty soon here. Um, and yeah, here we have it. Um, so I believe we have Pine Tree on the left, and we have Siakwan on the, the right. Uh, yeah, that is correct, yes. The names do seem to match up. Pine Tree is uh, considered the home team at the moment, so they had the choice of sides. They seem to have elected blue side and uh, Siakwam on the red. Now, next game, they will be allowed to uh, swap if they so choose, so uh, we'll see how that plays out. But we got bands coming in already. The original first ban of the day is going to be an Orn, a relatively popular pick on the top side. So, uh, not entirely sure if this is a targeted ban yet. I, I doubt it simply because he is a very common champion uh, in the current meta, if you will. Yeah, does a little bit of everything and uh, does a little bit of everything pretty damn well. Surprisingly damaging, given how you know durable it is. Uh, really great initiation with the ult. Uh, not just initiation, you can kind of save a bad situation with it as well. Uh, always good to consider the offensive and defensive applications of every champion and their abilities. Yeah, we're also seeing the Zillion ban from the red side there and the Jarvan ban now. Uh, getting that uh, early game jungler out of the way there and then that Zillion, that uh, either mid lane or support, uh, very annoying to deal with. So I don't blame the ban there at all. Yeah, I do. Uh, I enjoy playing a zillion myself occasionally. Not, not as, you know, in, sort of in, ter in terms of like a main or anything like that, but uh, a very, very annoying character. And uh, I think people underestimate essentially. You almost like to consider annoying factor like a stat on the character, like offense or defense or mobility, because an annoyed enemy uh, generally doesn't perform as well as they like to. Yep. There's a certain amount of that kind of champion where you you see it and you're like, oh, okay, zillion's low. Like this is where it's time to go in. Uh, and then that overextension into that area will lead to bad things for your team. And a uh, few more of those champions, actually. Uh, Shen, uh, another mm. champion where, you know, you might think you have an opening on that team, and um, suddenly there's a Shen ult coming in, and they have a 400, 500 health shield uh, and a giant tank in front of them. That's uh, always a... An unfortunate thing to run into. Um, I, and I believe the last thing uh, I was doing commentary for, I kind of mentioned this point previously, but uh, Shen is an interesting character because uh, a lot of the time I think teams tend to over-rely on the possibility of the ult for saving them, and they overemphasize split pushing. And uh, I think people kind of treat it like he can always show up, but there's always that opening, that window, where a team can get in. Of course, we're not going to be seeing that as he was banned. Uh, we're already into picks here. Of course, we have a... Jinx on the side of Pine Tree, a Zaya on the side of uh, Siakum. So 80 carry initial picks for both teams. Yeah, that's a lane that uh, I imagine isn't going to, we're not going to be seeing too much, uh, depending on the supports. Mm. Uh, both of those picks are, are pretty safe ADC picks, which is why we're seeing them at the, the early portions of this draft here. Yeah, I mean, maybe some AD carry specialists might disagree with me, but I, I don't see, at least from an AD carry perspective, like quite as much volatility in terms of the. Uh, the counter counterability or you know hard counters and that sort of thing so mm. of course we're moving into uh, other lanes here this is an interesting pick for me personally Mordekaiser I did have a chance to speak with uh, some of the players here uh, on the part of the good Samaritan he is I believe a Mordekaiser main he said in the jungle so uh, kind of an unusual thing there but uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's going to do with that yeah, that's a pick I can speak to myself because that's one of the champions that I really like to play, oh. um, specifically in the jungle as well. Um, he is, his clear time is actually fantastic, um, and he stays pretty healthy because of all the like spell vamp and healing that he has. Um, the ganks are a little bit lackluster, but mm -hmm. like if he meets another jungler somewhere in the jungle um, and they elect to like fight and actually 1v1, uh, it will go poorly for the other jungler. I can imagine that being a very unpleasant uh, prospect for anyone on the receiving end of that giant two-handed mace. I know he's an excellent duelist, so uh, it's really why you, I guess you see him in the top lane so much as that sort of juggernaut archetype. But yeah, that showing up in the jungle, it sounds very painful. All right, and then we have both these bot lanes locked up now. The Jinx Lulu, that is a, that is a pretty scary bot lane. 
you're thinking about ways to turn that Jinx into a hyper carry, the Lulu is definitely the way to do that. Yep. Um, but then the Leona as well. I, I can't imagine it being very easy to catch a Zaya with her between her alt and the all of the Leona peel that's going to be coming out here. So definitely going to be you know I would imagine a relatively safe AD carry. But uh, we're talking about that, or rather, I guess I was talking about that annoying factor here. My weird like off tangents. <laughs> um, I, I've mentioned Lulu in the past as well. Uh, he, she's one of the few things I consider her more annoying than Zillion. That is a, just a very frustrating mm -hmm. character to run down herself, but also anyone that she's enhancing with her abilities. So uh, we'll see if uh, champions like Leona or Mordekaiser can lock her down and just essentially pin down a very, very slippery champion. Yeah, I've definitely experienced pulling Lulus into the Death Realm and being like, okay, this is how we get this Lulu, and then getting polymorphed and having, you know, a million <laughs> slows on me and then not ending up able to doing a whole lot, so. Yeah. Seeing some mid lane bans here out of the, the red team, I'm assuming, with uh, that Silas and that Ari. Um, so the champions that we, we have left for both teams, I believe, are the solo lanes, those mid and top. Um, mm -hmm. So we're starting to see some target bans coming out for those roles specifically. It's possible we might have just kind of a you know, Graves doing something really weird, but yeah, yeah, I doubt it. It's most likely simply the solo lanes that are left here. Um, and the final bands are just pretty standard stuff, no, nothing outside the, the realm of normalcy here. So I imagine they're more generalist bands as opposed to specialized, uh, I, I know what you do, this is you yeah. know, you're getting out here kind of thing. Speaking of that too, it looks like that's actually a Diana and a Kane. I, I imagine those are jungle bands on the blue side. So they might not be aware that that could be a Mordekaiser jungle. Yeah, that's actually a really good point, isn't it? Um, yeah, I, do, I mean, the reason I know is because I, I have some inside information here. So I hope I'm not <laughs> leaking anything and, you know, <laughs> balancing or tipping the, the scales of balance at the moment. But uh, here we have a Tam Kench. I, I like that character. Uh, how about you? I mean, he's very fun to play, very fun to watch. Uh, very not fun to play against yeah. uh, with the amount of CC and just the amount of damage that all of his auto attacks do. Um, doesn't seem like a, a character with that much damage, but uh, you come up against him in a fight in the wrong way and uh, you will find your life leaving you very quickly. Certainly, yeah. He fits into that category of champions that um, I think he's very easy to underestimate. The sort of tanky, not even quite juggernaut or bruiser tier but they have a surprising amount of damage, especially if you get ahead. You know, you think you're kind of trading with them casually, and then suddenly you're gone. Um, I think things like uh, Tam Kench or, really, to a degree, the new Volley Bear as well, but like the older Volley Bear where he just bite you. Yeah. Uh, things you just really got to watch out for. Okay, so rounding out with uh, Vladimir versus Swain in the middle lane, and then, yeah, Set mm -hmm. versus Tom Kench. Uh, both of these teams are very melee focused, or very short ranged. Uh, so I imagine we're going to be seeing a lot of fighting this game. It's going to be a, a bloody affair, I imagine. That looks just like a um, a fascinating mid lane matchup there with the Swain versus Vladimir. Uh, endless sustain. We're going to see a, sort of a battle of attrition, essentially. See who gives up first or who loses a bit of concentration. Both those uh, characters, both from a, a team fighting context and a laning context, are just going to sit there for very, very long periods of time. So I'm really interested to see how that one goes. League of Legends has always had kind of an interesting, almost contentious relationship with Sustain. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, currently Sustain seems quite popular. Uh, its popularity kind of goes up and down over the years. But right now I'm seeing a lot of Sustain all over the place at sort of every tier of League of Legends. So I think that might be an interesting fight to watch going on there and see who uh, buys some anti-healing technology first. Yeah, I imagine both teams are going to be looking for that <laughs> relatively uh, quickly. Uh, even talking about Tom Kench healing or set healing, like there's a lot of champions on both of these teams that have that healing available to them. When you're thinking about these two team comps and uh, what's going on between the two of them, what do you feel like are the keys to success for either of these teams? That's a good question. I'm, uh, may maybe you might like this answer, but I'm actually really curious to see how this jungle plays out exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, I played Mordecai myself in the top lane a few times, very rarely in the jungle. Maybe, maybe one or two times is sort of a silly gimmick and solo queue kind yep. of thing. But, um, you know, Graves is no slouch himself, certainly. Uh, he can fight back. I just it might be a dangerous prospect with, with a Mordekaiser. And just, I, I mean, obviously, jungle is not 
it's quite as isolated as I think people think it is sometimes. A lot of it has to do with lane pressure and who's doing what for you and, and that kind of thing. But uh, if they kind of meet out off on their own and assuming both teams are up to the task of following what's going on around in the map and that sort of thing, uh, I'm really curious to see how that exactly pans out. Mordekaiser obviously, even if he doesn't do very well, can come back quite easily uh, later on as well. So something to consider. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how those two junglers play around that first scuttle crab that spawns. Oh, yeah. uh, when you look at that mid lane matchup between the Vladimir and the Swain, I imagine the Swain will have some push priority there, um, at least in the earlier levels. Vlad doesn't have the, the greatest AoE early until he gets you know that more levels in his E, mm -hmm. which doesn't usually happen until later on. So we might see some, some early jungle duels where that Swain is able to move forward just a little bit faster. Uh, but if the Mordekaiser happens to catch the Graves out when he doesn't have those stacks of his grid available, um, it could be rough for Graves. Doesn't seem like an enviable situation. I know you mentioned Scuttle. I kind of mm -hmm. miss when, may maybe I'm weird here, but I miss when Scuttle used to give more EXP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something that is almost like more formality now, it feels like, where mm. it's like the junglers will still go for it and then will still end up being scraps and stuff around it, but it feels more like a, an honor thing than like yeah. a, than, you know, it actually being that influential on uh, EXP and gold. So Making a statement, as I'm the better jungler, I, I got this scuttle, never mind, it gave me, you know, two EXP or some crap, but... Yeah, and with how fast you can take it too by just smiting it immediately, uh. it, having it drop down to like 200 health and then like autoing it twice... Um, yeah, it's definitely interesting. Both of these junglers, though, will clear very, very quickly. I imagine we'll see both of them full clear uh, but before that first scuttle spawns, uh, both of these junglers with incredibly quick clear times. Mm -hmm. um, so we were kind of earlier also talking about how both these teams seem like uh, they lend themselves to um, rather... I don't know, slugtastic, if I might make up a word here, mm -hmm. where they just probably, um, may maybe brawling the whole time is not exactly the correct term for it. They do have options. Um, so that's why I'm actually personally curious to see how the, uh, the Lulu is going to fit into all this. Like, just that note of doing something a little bit different compared to um, uh, Sequim's uh, Leona, I believe it was, mm -hmm. who's going to more fit into that sort of mold. You can kind of go in, just really make things messy and, uh, you know, tank things up, lock people down, that kind of thing. So... Yeah, when I think of both teams, actually, it feels like their ADCs are going to be pretty well protected. Mm. On one side, you have, like, the set Graves, uh, I believe set Graves Swain, and, like, I'm imagining those three standing in front of your ADC. <laughs> uh, you're not going to get very far, especially when you add in the, the Lulu protection there. But then on the other side as well, like, it's a Zaya, and you're going to have to walk past a Vladimir, a Mordekaiser, and a Tom Kench. Certainly. Like... You are not getting to these ADCs. So depending on how those ADCs are able to position, where they're allowed to put themselves on the map, uh, and in those team fights, uh, that could be very influential as well. I'm wondering uh, personally how the... Uh, well, it's probably going to get used both ways, I imagine, based on the context. But um, how the Mordekaiser ult is actually going to be used in those sorts of fights, is it going to be prioritized in a defensive sense or an offensive sense? You know, rush someone down and be like, oh, AD Carry's getting bared down on by the, let's say, Tam Kench or something. Let's just get him out of there kind of thing. Mm -hmm. so. The um, the Mordekaiser ult in combination with challenging smite uh. can be pretty scary. Where, like, you don't even have to hit a lot of your abilities because those auto attacks with the, <laughs> the on-hit damage from challenging smite and the on-hit damage in Mordekaiser's kit um, just allows him to walk some of those champions down. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how, yeah, how that plays out. Take out uh, all requirement for skill. I mean, I'm sure everyone knows how to use their characters, but uh, you know, there's a quality in and of itself uh, to just be able to say, you know, we're going to make this consistent. I don't need to actually hit anything. You're going to die regardless. Yeah. And we are into the game here. So uh, we've got Pine Tree yet again on the blue side and Siaquam on the right side, or on the red side. So yeah, just to quickly go over the worlds, here we have a car topside, Kemsen in the jungle, Astrolith in the mid lane, squishy bottom side, working with bamboos, Siakum, we have Orissa in the top lane, Good Samaritan in the jungle here with his uh, Mordekaiser pick, which we've talked so much about, uh, S6, Bad Woman in the mid side with the Vladimir, and at the bottom we have... Uh, which uh, Ninja, uh, Ninju, I believe his name is spelt backwards, if I recall mm -hmm. correctly. I had a speak or a little discussion with him, uh, working with Geech in the bot side with the Leona, who is their main support. Uh, shout outs to Snazbaz, who I do believe is in the building, is the support uh, substitution. So thanks for showing up. Maybe we'll get to see you on the, uh, the stage one of these days. I look forward to it. Yeah. 
So we're seeing a pretty standard start here from both teams, just kind of lining up on the jungle, getting some wards out, recalling, swapping to a sweeper for, for the Graves and for the Mordekaiser for both of those junglers. Yeah, nothing too uh, exciting or strenuous going on at the moment. Both teams perfectly content with uh, starting this off in a slightly more even fashion here. So no crazy level one fights as the jungle camps will be spawning in about three seconds. It also looks like most of these characters are taking the, the pretty standard runes for, for their champions. I'm not seeing anything weird there besides maybe the Aerie on the, the Zaya being a little bit non-standard. Um, or just you could argue for like Lethal Tempo or something else. Mm -hmm. um, and then the only other one is maybe the Grave Stark Harvest. You might take like Fleet. But like all of these are uh, pretty reasonable summoner, ta summoner takes here. Was, uh, yeah, Mordekaiser was starting with both camps on that side there. Uh, so he's actually fairly potent on the the initial pull in jungle. And uh, someone who plays that, I guess you're familiar with it, but it looks interesting to me. Uh, it's sort of a foreign territory to a degree. Yeah, I mean, if you just take a quick look at the minimap, like, you can see that Mordekaiser is already starting to path towards those wraiths, um, or those chickens, uh, just getting done those wolves there already. And it's only about 2.15, but we've got a fight here in the bot lane. See you, Quom, with the first... Level 2, going to get that flash out of the Lulu, but not a whole lot else. And Bamboo, well, he does get out, but you always have to keep in mind that does burn a flash, a very important resource down at the moment. So going to have to watch out for Leona's ability to aggress and just jump on you, because Lulu's, you know, slippery, but uh, not a lot you can do in terms of gimmicks this early on. Oh, Swain getting a little bit low here in this mid lane. Yeah, action all over the place. There was a pretty good duel in the mid side, which seems to have, uh, you know, petered off at the moment. Top sides brawling really hard. Both players very in. There's that jump. Yeah, without a flash there, I can't imagine Lulu's going to be making out. No, first blood going to the Leona. Always a bit unfortunate when the support takes the kill, especially as a first blood, but, uh, you know, a kill's better than no kill, certainly. And it's better to always ensure that the kill happens. If you're not 100% certain if you're going to get it, just make sure it goes down. Now, granted, in that context, I imagine they really could have prioritized the AD carry <laughs> if they wanted to, but uh, that's a bit of nitpicking. Putting out a little bit of damage there on the Tom Kench, making sure that he doesn't feel 100% comfortable farming under that tower, but uh, he's a pretty beefy boy. He'll, he'll sustain up here. Oh, uh, there's an interesting fight going on here. What do we have? Ooh. Yep, Mordekaiser hits that E. You got to get out of there. Yep, another flash burned. Good use of the blast cone. Oh, there it is. There's the, the, the scuttle we were talking about here. All right, we, we declared it. See if wins. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the set and the uh, the Vlad actually both having that lane priority there, both moving over and being ready to take that uh, take that fight and help Mordekaiser take that um, without too much trouble. So good moves there from Suyakom. Yeah, certainly a uh, good job paying attention to the map for that. It's going to play out like that. Now, it certainly it doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, Bad Woman there had to essentially ensure, you know, or rather was leading up to that by getting um, Astrolift there a little bit low, so, you know, on the Swain, he wasn't quite as competent in backing things up. So uh, always good to see people sort of setting things up as opposed to just simply reacting. Mm -hmm. The uh, the tier start for Swain, too. I imagine that uh, Astrolift isn't too worried about giving up a little bit at, in the early stages here mm -hmm. in order to be able to stack that up and get to that late game kind of terror that Swain can become. Yeah, he's playing the long game, or as Swain says, he's five steps ahead of him. Or at least he used to say that. Did the, did the new lines, did they include that one still? Mm, not that I remember. Oh, that been. was a cool line, though. Yeah, it was. I don't know, I'm a fan of the uh, old Swain, personally. I actually, one of the few reworks that I like the old version of uh, compared to the new one. I'm not saying he's bad. I've actually been experimenting with it um, the last week or so, personally. But uh, still like the old one. But I'm just grumpy. With the E that was just the damage over time, the like yep. Yep. The little bolt. <laughs> you click on someone and they're just taking damage for a while. Yep. Between that and the crow, yep. I, I can understand why it's not in the game anymore. The league's trying to move away from that style of you click on someone and there's no counterplay, but I like it when my opponents don't have counterplay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, there are definitely still a few champions like that that are kicking around. No. Uh, don't see it quite as often now. Um... It looks like in the uh, the mid top and the jungle that Siokwam is taking a little bit of a lead here. Not a not a huge amount, but um, moving up about 10, 15 CS in both of those solo lanes. And uh, we got another fight here in the bottom lane. Lulu still with no flash. Well, mid lane, uh, Swain gonna survive there. He took a. I do believe he's okay. He's gonna be able oh. to just sustain on. He has approximately 10 hit points. 
I estimated here. But uh, certainly on the bottom side, it looks like uh, yeah, that sort of Leona's ability to sort of aggress early on and Bamboo's inability to really do too much about it on an early game Lulu. Um, it seems like a pretty frustrating thing to deal with. Um, hopefully Bamboo's is able to scale out of that and get to that point where Lulu essentially gets away from everything. But it takes time to get there. And a very good job for Siokwam to... They, I mean, I'm sure they know it. Obviously, you want to win regardless, but anyway, we've got another fight going on here. Oh, yeah. Actually taking those uh, those little um, plants, slowing Graves down and not allowing him to kite away, and he will die to that Mordekaiser. Fight going on here. Oh, they're actually fighting back this time. Lulu managing to uh, keep herself alive. She should be able to just barely win this duel here, even as just a support. On one health. Oh, does get the Glitter Lance, which will seal the deal there. Uh, so yeah, fighting all around here for, for a few seconds. Might have a, a quick second to catch our breath here. <laughs> um, it's actually huge that Swain was able to, to get that kill without taking Ignite in the lane. Um, I believe it was a little bit assisted with the turret there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it definitely feels good when you're able to get the first kill in the lane without actually having to take Ignite. Yeah, especially since they're in like such a sustained centric matchup, just doing it straight up without Ignite is perhaps a statement there on the part of Astrolift. And, uh, of course, on the bottom side, we did see a kill coming in from Bamboo as opposed to the AD carriers, and obviously the support was all that was left. Um, not ideal, but supports are, you know, important too. They need money. They're, they're people. This is interesting. Tom Kench electing to take that fight and to stand behind set. Looked very confident in, in the ability to uh, take that fight, uh, but then ended up getting ulted uh, and having to just walk on out. Uh, it didn't come out... Uh you know, too good in that, but uh, never mind. Here we have Kempson coming in. Is he attempting to... No, that's probably just going to peter out. It's not enough uh, steam behind that train. Yeah, that Grave's still level 5, but the fight is breaking out the top lane. Ignite goes down on the set, and he gets eaten. Going to let him tick down a little bit and get that last grasp proc to finish the deal. And of course, those DOTs are going to be... Uh, you know, they keep ticking while you're eaten, so... Yeah, and that's a really good way to reset that grass proc too. Wait that two or three seconds after you use the first grass proc uh, to get that another, that second one once uh, they come out of your belly. It's always a very frustrating experience with it. You, know, you just get eaten and you're sitting there and you know you're going to die. And like, <laughs> you get this over with. Man. Yeah, especially like frustrating when you're playing against a tank like Tom Kench and all he has at that point is a bramble vest. <laughs> and it's like, you really just built a bramble vest? Now you can 1v1 me, but... Uh, yeah, negating that healing, that regeneration from Set's kit is, is very crucial. Yeah, but, um, of course, Set is a capable uh, juggernaut himself, so hopefully, uh, at least from his perspective, uh, he'll be able to come back from that one. Yeah, I mean, watching the Mordekaiser jungle there for a second, I'd just like to point out that he has 76 farm at 9 minutes. That is incredibly quick for a jungler. Oh, yeah, that's uh, the most in the game, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, highest amount of farm in the game with that added kill as well from finding that Graves the one time. We are going to have a big Mordekaiser on our hands. Yeah, I, I mean, as I was saying, he's a character that can come back from behind. So you can just imagine when a character can do well when they don't have much money, how well are they going to do when they have a lot? Yes. We're seeing the dive here from the Vladimir. It makes it look easy uh, using that, uh, that pool to avoid the turret aggro. I'm um, just going to get the kill and get out scot-free. Perhaps a little bit of overconfidence on the part of Astral up there. He knew he was fairly low, but uh, elected, like very specifically elected to stick around and it cost him there. Of course, uh, Bad Woman using the, uh, the Ignite, so that's not going to be available for, you know, most likely the subsequent fight. But it's a good bit of harass coming down there. Well, I don't actually know. Tanky, uh, tanky 80 carry there in uh, Ninju, but... Yeah, it looks like going for maybe the Eclipse first. On Possibly. items? I think so. Uh, That'll make it a little bit hard to push the Zai out of lane, having that, that life steal um, and allow her to kind of farm on her own a little bit here while the Leona is taking a quick trip around the map, seeing <laughs> if there's anybody who is uh, sleeping a little bit. Um, but uh, Pine Tree is going to be a little bit careful knowing the Leona's not in the bot lane. I do like the idea of just people who very aggressively use Hextech Flash are just not afraid to use cooldowns. Just go around the map making things happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even if you don't actually accomplish anything with it, just uh, y you put the fear of God in the ascension. It's like, oh, this person is going to use their cooldowns. You always have to just be wary of that, which is an interesting sort of dichotomy where sometimes some players, you fear that the fact they hold on to abilities, and then in other cases, y you kind of always have to watch out what they're going to use it immediately sort of uh, things. It's interesting mind games. Mm-hmm. 
the uh, the Tom Kench is starting some dominance there. Vladimir might be a little bit too deep here. Doesn't have his jungler around. His jungler's in the bottom lane. He's going to walk right into turret. Oh, and the Lulu does tick down. Oh, did Vladimir grab himself a kill there, didn't he? Oh, no, he didn't. No, no, no. Graves went over to do his chickens, he and uh, Astrolift says, you know, I don't need the Graves here. I can 1v1 you on my own. Um, I imagine the damage from Graves to start that off definitely yep. did help, but uh, finishes the job on his own there. Very, very good uh, route by Astrolift, actually. He even ended a max range uh, E and uh, just managed to barely catch out Bad Woman, who was perhaps pushed up slightly too far, but definitely a nice skill shot on the part of Astrolift, so well done. So, yeah, the game's looking pretty close here in the... Uh, at the 12 minute mark, we're one kill apart. We're about 3k gold difference with that first tower coming through and that dragon, um, as well as some of that f little bits of farm difference. Top lane evening out a bit here. The mid lane about 25 for, for Vlad, but um, very much could go either way here. It's actually interesting. Uh, it's not the biggest gold difference in the universe, but it's not insubstantial either. I, th I figured, you know, looking at the scoreline, it would be a bit closer than that, but yeah, that first tower actually is just adding up uh, quite a bit, I suppose. Or Mm -hmm. Interesting. There's uh, some aggression here. <laughs> oh, Lulu without the flash again. Is going to get stunned. Is going to get pulled into the death realm. Gets rooted by the Leona root as it happens. And there's only so far you can run. Mordekaiser will find you. Yeah, so we were talking about earlier, the lack of counterplay. You just die when you're standing next to him. So, Yeah, he has his Rift Maker, by the way. Uh, uh. <laughs> he's had it for a little bit because he's been out on the map for, for a tiny bit already. But yeah, 12-minute Rift Maker out of that Mordekaiser. And unfortunately, Lulu on the receiving end of that. Bamboo having perhaps a bit of a frustrating game. We're talking about you know, the character being frustrating, but uh, being frustrated himself at the moment, it seems. Hopefully, he's able to pull himself together and uh, show us what that Lulu pick is capable of doing. Mm -hmm. Graves just very quietly farming. But a slight lull, and people pinging in the mid side. So we'll see if this turns into any sort of fence on the mid lane, but seeing that Zaya start to move around the map and see if there's any more turret plates that, that she can munch on. Isn't going to find too many there in the mid lane. We don't have too long before those turret plates will go down for the remainder of the game. Leona engaging. Uh, might have bit off a little bit more than she could chew. Uh, Leona is tanky, especially with those three kills, but uh, not quite tanky enough. Graves is going to get himself out of there. And uh, looks like they're going to disengage for a moment, but the dragon is up, so those health bars do matter right now. Yeah, and they're going to find themselves a player down. Of course, this early in the game, Leona is going to be respawning already, so Geach will be back shortly. And it, we'll see if that even matters, as both teams are very aggressively uh, trying to grab the dragon here and is ultimately grabbed by Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser, yep, the extra damage on that Q. Swain is going to walk in. He's trying to take down the Zaya, but the Zaya ult will completely avoid that. And Jinx left alone on the back line is going to make it out. Yeah, that was a, a bad situation turning into a worse situation for Pine Tree there as they lost some members on top of the dragon. Uh, also, uh, Noteworthy once again that Bad Woman's Ignite was used on uh, Swain immediately, so Astral not able to sustain through that fight. Swain's sustain is very significant, but if you can get something on him that's going to prevent it, uh, he's especially at this stage in the game, he's still going to go down relatively quickly. Yeah, and uh, on the side of Pine Tree, no Grievous Wounds yet, besides out of that Tom Kench in that Bramble Vest. And um, notably, not having TP or a way to get down to that fight means that that life steal from the Zion, the the drain from the the Mordekaiser and the uh, Vladimir. There's a lot of healing there that's going uncontested. It's definitely something that uh, Pine Tree is going to have to be paying attention to. It's an interesting thing that uh, you know all teams at this level usually recognize that you know you need that sort of anti-healing grievous wounds sort of thing. But it, a lot of it comes down to the timing in which you do it, and you got to just get a feel for it. It's like okay, we need it now. Um, especially before anything too catastrophic happens. Ooh, Tom Kench with that Frostfire Gauntlet immediately getting that power spike and saying, I am going to fight you. And set forced to burn that flash to get out safely. Yeah. At least there was a good reaction there to see the, uh, the Q coming there and avoiding the tongue. And I feel like if that had landed, uh, it might have been a bad situation for uh, Isira. But, of course, that is a re another resource down. And... Yeah, <laughs> Jinx with no flash, no cleanse, uh, just getting caught out by that proto belt. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit less safe than I than I originally thought yeah. um, in Champion Select. 
That's not a great sign for Pine Tree when someone, uh, never mind that, we have another fight going on here. Nice job by Leona. Yeah, flashing over the, or I guess Hex flashing over that wall. Uh, it looks like they're trying to chase the Graves down on the, on the, behind the tower. Vladimir isn't gonna, isn't going to step quite that far forward. Pool not available anymore. And ultimately nothing else coming from that fight for the time being, although Bad Woman and uh, Ju still looking for something. Never mind, Swain just blows up. All right. Um, a sequence of events there that uh, bode ill for Pine Dream. As uh, originally we saw, of course, uh, Squishy just getting blown up. Uh, out of no, we, I think we both thought she was relatively safe there, but th that's the interesting point. When you think you're safe and the enemy team can do something about it, that really speaks to a potential flow issue of the game. Uh, so Pine Tree... I mean, I suppose there are two schools of thought to this, where it's either you do something right now to change things, and you're really confident in your ability to do it, or just sit back, let things kind of, uh, you know, calm down a bit, play the long game. We'll see which option they go with. Yeah, I mean, you don't necessarily have to get this dragon, but Ocean Dragon with that much healing on your team already oh. um, might make Grievous Wounds just completely... Um, it might overheal the Grievous Wounds. <laughs> As we're going to see another fight here, Tom Kench going in, hiding in the bush. Set's going to use that ult to try and get away. Is going to get eaten again by the Tom Kench and will finish the job. And grim prospects in the top side here. Uh, Usira's ult with the set, just it doesn't really even do anything right now. Tom Kench is too tanky and uh, seems to have the run of it up there. If they're going to stay in that top side, which incidentally, both towers are still up. Um, I think he's going to need a bit of assistance if he's going to uh, try and fight back against the giant catfish. I mean, yeah, that would be a great um, sort of uh, reprieve for, for Pine Tree, being able to get a turret, get some of that objective bounty here. Uh, might be exactly what they need to put themselves back into this game. Yeah, even out that gold title, or gold amount a little bit here. Graves getting very low. Oh, Two-person Leona ult. Is going in, and Graves is definitely going to die. L Lulu forced to use that flash, but will make it out alive. And Jinx as well will just slowly walk out of that one. Uh, quite a few members at very low health. Swain here is in trouble. That uh, Herald is going to be coming down. They've got three members surrounding the turret. Um, is going to pop the alt, but doesn't have enough time to drain any health with it um, or get much accomplished. So. Oh. Another immediate use by Bad Woman. He's just on the ball doing that. He does not want to see what Swain is capable of in terms of resource sustain. You could argue it was a bit excessive, maybe, but uh, I'm, I'm going to say, yeah, just better safe than sorry when dealing with a Swain. It's yep. also, again, I've been talking about bad signs, which, hold on a second, we got ourselves another fight here, potentially. Low health there on the Vlad, but the Jinx ult is going to take it. Jinx kiting away from this Mordekaiser inside the Death Realm, oh, but, no. yeah, can't do enough there. That challenging smite too powerful. They are going to get the Tom Kench, and um, it looks like we've got a... S where's the TP? Oh, the TP is the Swain. Uh, pulling in set. Is going to use that ult there, uh, getting some damage off here. A big W. Leona coming in for the assist, and S set is going to clean it up. That is an ace for Siaquam, while the rest of their team takes that dragon. Yeah, it looks like set was able to do some uh, good work with his team uh, uh, there. So, you know, obviously he wasn't having the greatest time in the dueling top lane context, but of course this is a team game, and uh, winning in team fights is what counts really in the long run. Yeah, and um, if we're looking at the items and, and what ha is like coming after that fight, this is an extremely strong Zaya. Zaya just picked up that, um, uh, shoot, I don't remember actually what that armor pen item is called, um, but the Cyrilda's Grudge. There we go. Um, picking up the Grudge and then also transforming the um, into the Muramana. Uh, so those are two pretty heavy power spikes that the Zaya is hitting at once. Um, so that is a very strong AD carry. I'm glad you remember the names because I just know like old names in my head because I've been playing the game yes. too long <laughs> and they just kind of get mixed up and it's like, oh, is this thing called this now or that now? Yeah, the first thing that I thought of was Lord Dominic's, and I was like, wait, no, that is that is the other one. Well, back to the top side here, although the opponent in this context is a bad woman, who's not doing too much better thus far, but he's a long game champion. We'll see what happens here. This Tom Kench is a menace in these 1v1s. Uh, clearly knows uh, just how strong his champion is in those one-on-ones. Uh, and making work out of these champions. Anybody that comes up there to face him in that 1v1. Yeah, I imagine Bad Woman is probably feeling pretty confident earlier um, with his plays, but Tom Kench is going to uh, take him down a notch or two. Wow, Graves with some fancy footwork there, dodges the ult, 
um, is able to get out with a, with a dash and an alt. Um, yeah, sneaks out of there. That was a pretty dicey situation. So good on uh, Kempson to be able to get out of there safely. As we have a moment here, I'd like to maybe perhaps briefly harken back to uh, that big team fight we had on the bot side. Oh, never mind. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, there's that strong Zaya. You, uh, you don't watch those feathers and uh, suddenly your life bar is gone. Yeah, with so much going on on the map, it's just a lot of keep to keep track of. Mm -hmm. you know, you're trying to, you know, use your, uh, it's something like a Graves. You, you're probably really thinking, I want money, I want money. But uh, sometimes it's a bit more important to keep yourself alive. Yeah. This little root coming in there. Uh, we'll see if anything comes of this. Uh, it's always a scary prospect when a car is around with his Tam Kench. Yeah, taking about half health off of that Mordekaiser. If he didn't have that team around, you know that that Tom Kench would have chased him down. Mm -hmm. Definitely, uh, perhaps the bright spot for Pine Tree at the moment. Their uh, one shining beacon that may lead them towards victory, or at least a bridge to a point where the team can kind of rally around him. But for the time being, still dire straits to th for them to a certain degree. They're not down and out by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I'm not favoring their position at the moment too too much. Yeah, that two-minute timer on that uh, that Ocean Drake is ticking down, and you know that Pine Tree must be feeling that pressure uh, because if they don't get that Ocean Drake and Siaquim gets the Ocean Soul, that spells danger for uh, for Pine Tree. Yeah. I really do like how um, over the years League has started to prioritize more and more these neutral objectives that are more frequent that kind of like essentially force team fights. Mm -hmm. or, you know, create that consideration of, well, we can't just kind of sit back forever. We can give a certain amount of ground, but at a certain point, we've given up too much sort of thing. Uh, not quite as relevant for your average player's solo queue, I think, but uh, definitely in these organized plays like this where people blow up. And we are actually able to keep that Jinx alive this fight. Uh, does get out of there. Needs to burn the cleanse, burn the flash, and burn the Lulu alt. Um... Uh, might not be up. The, the cleanse and the flash definitely not going to be up for that dragon fight, but uh, Lulu ult might be back up in time. Uh, looks like they're uh, going right for Baron. Uh, I imagine they're going to kill this relatively quickly with this team. Of course, Pine Tree has something to say about this, and they are showing up in force. they got to do something quick, though, as Baron is down to half already. Yeah, Zaya actually pretty low health was taking the majority of the damage there and just takes a Graves ult to the face, and that is going to be Pine Tree uh, starting this fight off without dealing with that Zaya. Mordekaiser are getting eaten by the Tom Kench. Vladimir is going to be diving into the Pine Tree team. Uh, will do quite a lot of damage. Doesn't take out everybody. Set moving forwards is going to get low. Mordekaiser on the back line. And Pine Tree is doing it. This is going to be an ace for Pine Tree. Leona goes in. And yes, there they have it. The Baron a little bit ill-advised. This is probably going to get Dragon for them as well. Um, that is a huge swing from Pine Tree. Yeah, and a very unfortunate choice there. Um, I mean, I can understand the thought process there. It's like, oh, we, we're in command. We can mostly do things. I think they were kind of, they got used to this concept of largely doing whatever they wanted around the map so long as Tam Kench wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, when you're that far ahead, you, d you don't need to take big risks like that. You can kind of just kind of slowly win, you know, wait for a much easier objective like Dragon. Of course, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I can say things like this as the commentator, but uh, uh, I think in that instance, caution might have been a bit more well advised. Yeah, or even just making sure that it wasn't the Zaya who was in the pit taking the majority of the, yeah. the damage because, yeah, you have your ADC there with, with seven kills and these, these big items and uh, all it takes is that one well-placed Graves alt and suddenly you're down a player. So yeah, and they, yeah, really, it's like kind of you said, they, she didn't need to be down, essentially. They could have been going in with a full oh, five, but and still We are going. starting it off again with Vlad and Zaya again in the pit. Um... We're just going to run this right back. I, know, I can't quite see the Baron. The Baron's at about half. We can just kind of barely see its health through the uh, bars there. Here comes Tam Kinch, though. Pine Tree not quite as well in position here. Red Team is going to take that Baron. Tom Kench in the wrong side of the map is going to get taken out there. That, that's an interesting case of... I don't know if I still agree with the call, but it worked out. So who am I to say anything? Uh, very, very aggressive. Immediate. It's good, decisive action. I do appreciate. I'll, I'll certainly give Sequim that. I appreciate the ability to simply, you know, come up with a plan and actuate it immediately. So, you know. yeah. I mean, 
Pine Tree was out on the map there for a while. They got the turret and the dragon after that fight, and maybe they just stayed a little bit too long. And uh, Siaquam punishing them, taking the Baron, and uh, starting to raise the base here. A lot of time, really, uh, it just kind of comes down to yeah, really decisive action. Sometimes it's just better to do something, even if it's the wrong call. Just do it as a team. Commit to something. Um, you know, let the world know that you're in charge of this game, essentially. And of course, it bit them once, but team fight here. Okay, Zaya does get hit by that. Swain pull um, is going to make her way out with the ult. That Swain sitting in the front line, draining so much health off of the team. Is still holding on there at the top. Uh, Graves walking around in the death realm. Oh, oh my goodness. Up. Oh, everybody with such low health bars, but the Tom Kench is not going to be the one that's able to clean that up. Uh, so we're waiting for another 30 seconds or so till these uh, teammates can make it back. And there are super minions at the Nexus. Uh, so Tom Kench is going to have to make a hero play here to be able to hold on to this game. Uh, Everyone's so low. It's, uh, very, oh, there we oh, go, finally. It does Kench get in down. there, but uh, doesn't have enough damage to, to clean that up. Zaya is going to die there, uh, going over to the Tom Kench. Um, actually, they might not be able to take this. Oh, no, they've got the... Uh, the uh, super creeps coming through. Oh, the Jinx rocket actually uh, killing the Mordekaiser, getting the Jinx excited, uh, isn't going to chase out too far. It's an interesting fight there, uh, resulting in not a win. Uh, Vlad just barely making it out with his puddle. But um, yeah, it's, it's a good example of people uh, you know, understanding their characters to uh, the utmost degree. When, pe when It's not a coincidence that everyone just barely makes it out like that. I know, you know, when you're playing in Zelda Cure or whatever, what you're used to seeing is, oh, that guy is so lucky. He made it out with 10 health or, you know, whatever. But when you see everyone doing that, it's a case of understanding most of the time anyway uh, that, uh, you know, your character is capable of doing this. I can stay this long. I can do these things. And now it's time to leave. So uh, well done in terms of sort of maximizing the potential of all the characters on the field by really both teams at the moment. Yeah. Uh, if you're Pine Tree at this point, I feel like having that, um, yet again, that dragon timer being, uh, being worrisome here. You have an open nexus. Um, are you going to be safe to get out that far on the map in a minute or so uh, to try and contest that? Or do you feel like somebody from, from Siaquam will just walk into your base and, and tap your nexus a few times? Because that's really where their base is at right now. Yeah, it's not a great situation no matter what you do. So the classic damned if you do, damned if you don't sort of uh, position for them at the moment. And it's about to spawn here, so uh, the time of destiny is upon us. Yeah, I feel like you have to go for this one, unfortunately. Um, not the greatest spot for, for Pine Tree. Walking into a lot of unpleasant characters who are well set up and entrenched there as well. Uh, there's something to be said of... Uh, you know, a team who can actually set up and get the position beforehand as well. Uh, and obviously the team coming in can do stuff, you know, they, especially if they have good vision, they can flank around and do sorts of creative things. But if a team has time to set up, especially with a team like this, it's going to be relatively difficult to dislodge them. Seems like Siaquam knows they're, they're denying so much of the vision around here and just waiting for Pine Tree to feel like they, they need to walk up. And Vladimir is going to pull the trigger here. Puts out a lot of damage onto the Graves, forces the Graves back. Alt Pops is still burning, is going to survive, but isn't going to be in a place where they have that smite for that Ocean Dragon. Uh, so this will go over to Siaquam. Most likely. I mean, at this point, the regular Dragon dies so quickly. One guys are blocking the missile. <laughs> yeah, that might have been the last thing that... It looks like Zaya just soloing it. Oh, actually, isn't that low? Is going to take it. Um, now, can you win a fight against the Ocean Soul? Starting it off by killing the Vlad is a great start. Well, it's not a bad, uh, not a bad start for them. Of course, uh, Pine Tree, or rather, Siakum has ground to give, so it might be in their best interest to maybe just give up a tower here, not engage anything too, too hard. Um, just kind of take it easy at the moment. Just uh, allow for a bad womb to respawn, come back in, and back them up with that all-important Vladimir. Uh, yeah, it's not, not the kind of thing you want to go into a brawl without. Yeah, I mean, even without the Vladimir at this point, you've got a five-item full-build Zaya on your side with that GA at this point, and Ocean Soul and Leona Protection. Uh, it looks like even without that Vlad, they are still feeling pretty confident in moving forward, taking out the enemy jungle uh, and taking all the gold they can. Zaya actually being a good teammate and saying, hey, I'm full-build, you guys should take some of this. Um, does eventually end up taking it because nobody was taking it from her. But 
What a nice person, you know. I, I, always I just see 80 carries that are full build. I'm like, I know I'm still grabbing all the farm. You, you know, I, I need to, uh, I don't know, invest this in my retirement fund or something. I don't know what they're doing with the gold. But they like to see the number go up. Uh -uh. That's, that's why they play that role. Mm -hmm. so those 80 carry players. Not, not just, you know, good junglers and support players like <laughs> ourselves here. Uh, listen, sometimes I just, I, I will take a few extra camps as my our base is dying to, you know, make sure that I see my numbers go up a little bit. So I, I know how it is. But, uh, meanwhile, that's all going on. A neat little play there coming in from Siaquam, uh, using essentially their offensive threat and just walking down the mid lane to force Pine Tree to back off and not get too much, despite the fact that Siaquam at the time was down by a player. So essentially forcing a stalemate-like situation with their team positioning when they saw Pine Tree topside. Vladimir pretty far forward here again. Tom Kench might also be too far forward. Is going to get the Lulu ult. Uh, is going to pop that shield. And looks like he's just going to be able to walk right out of here. Oh, a huge Swain pull. He's going to be moving forward into the fight. Um, that Mordekaiser tanking through a lot of damage here. Is trying to take out that Swain. And it looks like they're actually going to be able to take down that Mordekaiser, but they're dealing with the rest of the team on the back end who are all regenning from that Ocean Soul. Set is going to dive in on the Jinx and take her out with that W. And the Swain, who's been draining through all of this, <laughs> does end up falling. And you've got to think that that's a game. Uh, I think that, that fight there really encapsulates what this game was all about. Just so much sustain, people lasting so long, especially between the Vladimir and uh, Astrolith there on the Swain. They were there until the bitter end, and it started in a way where uh, a car on that um, Tam Kench just lasted for it. He was admittedly caught out, and it wasn't a great start to the whole fight, but um, ultimately, uh, Sophia Kung coming out with the win here for game number one of our best of three. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, for being down 10,000 gold and fighting up against an Ocean Drake at that point, mm. that was a pretty close fight. No, a really good job with those skill shots that we saw. I think what really turned it around was a very nice um, Swain where just kind of locked the whole team up that narrow corridor, and mm -hmm. a bunch of AoE was able to go off as a result of that. So it's a very good sign for sort of essentially the competitive integrity of this best of three, and I'm really looking forward to see um, how this shapes up and uh, you know how the teams are going to adapt going forward. Yeah, especially with the changes to that Swain route, mm. um, actually being able to pull multiple people with yep, that yep. now, uh, seeing that come into action. I wasn't sure how big of a like an impact that change was actually going to have, but seeing like almost that full team in that corridor get pulled in, yeah, um, yeah I, got, I got excited for that. So Yeah, it looked like they were going to win that for a second there, and that would have been a really good spot for them to really come back and do a lot of damage at that point. But um, we're going to have to, I suppose, wait to the next game. To see uh, Pine Tree attempt to enact that sort of damage on their rival Siaquam. Yeah. I'm actually really excited to, to see what the draft is going to hold for us. I wonder if any yeah. of those picks are, are a little bit too much. Um, I, I loved the Mordekaiser pick. I think I it know, played yeah. out exactly how they kind of wanted it to. They kind of got those duels happening. They got the, the high levels of farm. Uh, and were able to just kind of like walk through a lot of those fights in the early mid game as a result. Certainly uh, looking forward to potentially seeing some uh, very targeted bands and just kind of get into the headspace of uh, how the players are going to adapt to this game. And even from like Pine Tree, like now you don't have to spend two bands thinking that they're, they, they're still going to have a jungle pick coming through, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Kane Diana, unless there's some, some crazy Kane Diana lane stuff that I'm, I'm not aware of. <laughs> um, but yeah, it should, should be a fun second game and, and hopefully we get three. Yeah, I, I want to nice. see a close set. Yeah. It's uh, really entertaining watching both of these guys. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in to the BCSS High School League of Legends Finals for the 2021 to 2022 season to decide the ultimate victors and champions. Thanks for watching. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that we we should be thinking of for for game two. Uh, I'm guessing we'll probably see it the same sides. Um. I do believe, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, Seacom has the uh, uh, the choice of it. Uh, so interesting. They're, okay. they're simply going. Yeah, well, well, it's really up to them. Um, I don't know. Do people have preferences in terms of? I I know I don't really care. Mm -hmm. but, but what about you? Um, yeah, I mean, like I've I've heard that like some players specifically prefer one side or the other. Um, I, I have an ADC friend who's just like, yeah, I, I don't, I don't play on red side. Like, if I get red side, <laughs> like, you, like somebody else go bot lane, please, um, just because of the camera angles and stuff. And okay. I know that some of the the pro teams prefer having one side o over the other as far as like pick spans, um, being able to get like 
the first two picks um, in the second rotation of, of picks rather than getting like, you know, last pick. Yeah. Um, just depending on, on team styles and stuff. But I think, yeah, yet again, I feel like that's much more preference than like one is explicitly better than the other. I mean, in the case of your friend, maybe that's a bit unusual. It seems like a... Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, that I don't think is coming into play here. I feel like these players <laughs> are very competent on both sides. I, I feel like that's perhaps a weakness that that person should address. But um, Yes, I agree. I, yeah, I suppose the, the bigger point is whether or not they like, you know, first ban, you know, pick kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, and it's definitely like that is a legitimate consideration that's different from the standard League of Legends. A lot of us sort of play out there very casually. Um, I, I know, like, again, personally, I don't care about bands that much. Usually I have these very spiteful specific bands that are designed to not let solo crew teammates pick specific things that I suspect <laughs> they're going to feed on. Uh, yep. but yeah, I definitely have a few of those champs where I'm like, okay, if this champion's on my team, they're going to do very poorly. But if they're on the enemy team, I am not going to be able to deal with them. Yeah. I think the classic example of that that a lot of people from familiar would be like the Yasuo's and the Yone's mid lane. I had a bit of a weird one to the mix with the Ezreal person. I, if we mm. don't like Ezreal's on my team, I know, and I'm not saying Ezreal was bad, and I know people can play Ezreal well. It's just if I don't know you, I don't know if I trust you to play <laughs> that character. Yeah, we are seeing uh, Pine Tree getting set back up on stage here. Uh, uh, so we will be seeing them load back into those lobbies and getting that champion select started relatively soon here. Um, another Y champion that I don't enjoy playing <laughs> um, or having with on my team or playing against, uh, the Yumi. Oh, yeah. Uh, that one's definitely another hit or miss champion. Uh, maybe it's something to do with those Y champions. It's hard to <laughs> say. No, I, I've definitely heard that sentiment before. Um, the last time I was doing casting uh, with you guys here, uh, when you had me with the Dia, he said he was saying the exact same thing. He, as mm -hmm. a support main, he hates playing against Yumi. Um, I, I don't. Again, I'm just weird. I know I'm an outlier. I don't mind it personally, perhaps because I find the character amusing, and I think yep. there's a certain degree of that. When I find something funny, I don't necessarily mind seeing it in most contexts. Yeah. But, uh, when when I when I can see the Yumi on the enemy team picked before me, mm. I love it because then I just pick Evelyn, uh. and I'm just like, okay, I can outburst your healing. Um, you know, I can deal with like I can sometimes even burst you through exhaust, and then if you pop out after your ADC, I get a few extra dark seal stacks, um, and that feels great. But other than that, I, I dislike it. <laughs> I think I just like the concept of the character personally a lot. Where it's it's just, it's very, I don't know. It seems like it embodies. An interesting aspect of League of Legends where Riot doesn't tend to do anything too crazy or weird or has this base kit they like to work with a lot of the time, but the, mm -hmm. the nature of the character is very different because of the whole kind of attach mechanic. And uh, I don't know, I, I really want to see more like strange stuff in League personally. I know it's hard to balance, but mm -hmm. just a preference of mine. So we are going to see this team swap sides here. This is going to be Pine on the red side and Siaquam on the blue side. Um, we're seeing that Zillion ban. This is the exact same ban that Siaquam banned first in uh, our first game here. We'll have to see what Pine bans on the other side. It is still the orange. So, so far, seeing those same bans. Identical, yeah. Yep. Have those specific ban or those specific characters you don't want to play against. I think that's you know very respectable, yeah, you know? Perfectly fair, yeah. You know what you like. You know what you're good with. Um, they are going to actually ban out that Vlad. Pine Tree saying... That was frustrating to deal with. <laughs> you ignored our towers. You ignored our front line. You just went in and did so much damage. Uh, definitely a respect ban there. Yeah, can't say necessary blame. Uh, that was a rather devastating pick. I think the only thing that managed to deal with him was uh, one side top lane. Um, Tam Kench ate him. Right. But, uh, you can't <laughs> rely on that all the time. You know, Tam Kench is uh, uh, expected to do a lot in that game, so you can't just be considered, uh, I'm going to shut down Vlad the whole time. Yeah, so we're going to see the Jinx first pick again. Um, they banned out the Zaya on the side of Pine Tree, and uh, we're just going to see that blue side first pick Jinx again. Well, seems like I'm watching a, the pick ban version of a set play. You know, they, they know what they're <laughs> doing, and they're just going to go forward with it, which I never worked out for the first time. Why not? I can't disagree with that kind of logic. And of course, they're not done yet. They might swap it up considerably, but certainly for the time being, a, a familiar look, unlike Aphelios here. Yeah, that is different. Um, Squishy in that first game playing that Jinx um, and now going to be playing that Aphelios. Um, ooh, we're seeing two of the newer champs in the game, Renata Glask. Um, ah. Definitely an enabler of these these hyper carries like Aphelios. Um, and if he's able to get one of those kills after being revived by Renata, um, will stay alive. So 
that is going to be a lane that needs to get ahead um, and needs to get to the, early, or the later stages of the game as well. Yeah, very interesting character. I think he's the sort of thing that benefits... Um, I mean, most characters benefit quite a bit from organized play, but uh, I've seen her in solo queue a few times and just generally been disappointing. Perhaps it's a, you know, a sample size issue, but I'm really looking forward to see like a, a dedicated supporter who knows what they're doing uh, playing that character and sort of timing the abilities really well. As, uh, that revive mechanic can uh, really swing a fight. Whereas uh, Siaquam here on the blue side is kind of throwing down the gauntlet and saying, okay, this is um, pretty close to our last comp. We're going to throw that Mordekaiser jungle at you again. We're going to throw the Leona support at you again. Um, and you're going to have to figure out how to deal with this. Jinx is going to fill the same role as Zaya, more or less. Um, and we're going to see Rengar from Pine. That's an interesting one there. It's a very snowball-y kind of character. Maybe not in the traditional sense, because I, I, I don't know, I personally feel like um, Rengar's major power spike when he's doing well is in the mid game, as opposed to like the super hyper late game kind of snowball mm -hmm. carry. But uh, I feel like it's like level three and then like, yeah, like mid game. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like if anybody's going to be able to fight that Mordekaiser in the early game, it might be a Rengar. Uh, perhaps an adaptive strategy towards that, as uh, of course they didn't elect to ban the Mordekaiser, and uh, the Good Samaritan there has, uh, it's probably going to be him in any case, I imagine. It's going to be the jungle as opposed to the top side. But, uh, you know, even though we know that, or theoretically know that, there is always still that possibility that they're going to just swap things around. You know? Yeah, I mean, if you're looking at a, a car up there in that top lane, um, they just they just wanted to fight. They just wanted to, to scrap, so and that Tom Kench um, was definitely a character that allowed them to do that. But Rengar is kind of that sort of champion as well. You know, you just constantly want to be scrapping with your opponent, resetting out of those bushes. So that could be a top lane as well. Yeah, well, ultimately, I suppose we'll find out uh, when they round out the last of these two picks here. So far, um, I, don't know, I find the... Uh, the Leona pick, interesting, not necessarily the character itself, but sort of uh, in terms of how it was played last game. The um, It felt like, not to say that the, the character was ineffectual in the team fight. In fact, Leona was doing quite well in the team fight last game. Um, but her real impact felt like she was just this very oppressive lane presence. I, I felt like the bottom side was doing quite well there. Um, so we'll see if they'll be able to keep that one up. Lulu just really wasn't able to do anything for, I feel like, the first 10 minutes of the game as, as a result of that kind of very tanky shutdown pressure. Okay, and they um, see them leaving that Zoe open this time. Um, they hover the Zoe for a moment. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to end up coming through here. It's a, it's actually very hard to tell where Pine is going still. That Rumble could be flexed to the to the top or the mid lane still. Mm. Um, I'm guessing it's top lane, but it's it's really hard to tell. That would be my guess. Yeah. Um, I know Rumble's an interesting character. I I, I personally this is. All for all the wrong reasons. I miss season two Rumble when he was horrendously overpowered. <laughs> I feel like he somehow just gets like overtuned close to all of the world championships. <laughs> Maybe not the last couple, but um, I, I really appreciate the way that he plays, and I appreciate seeing him in, in game. So I'm excited to watch him this this uh, match. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a very unusual situation where he was. You know, normally people clue into the fact when something's overpowered, right? And they'll be like, "Oh, it's overpowered. We're either going to ban it all the time, or going to pick it." He was an unusual case where no one knew he was overpowered, partially because certain streamers, or I'm not going to name, were really big at the time, said this can't champion sucks. <laughs> and everyone parroted that thought. And I'm meanwhile sitting here for half the season spamming Rumble with like a 90% win rate because it's not me. Literally, it was the character's grotesque. <laughs> you couldn't stand near him and he would just annihilate you. And I don't know why people thought he was bad. Of course, this is not that Rumble. I'm just, you know, reminiscing about the good old days. So thank you for indulging an old man at the moment. But... Yeah, and we do actually end up seeing that rumble moving towards the mid lane, um, which, yeah, it's a it, it, good flex from them, um, being able to pull out that Malphite last pick in order to deal with that Camille. Mm. Um, having someone that can kind of, like, stand their ground a little bit against Camille, you know, a movable object a little bit there against such a du good duelist like that Camille. And then, um, yeah, I imagine we're going to be seeing a lot of pushing out of that rumble, um, Rumble in the mid is cool because you you get that such strong push power out of your out of your Q that flame spitter, and then you can roam around and help your jungler. You can set up some ganks with the, with the uh, the ultimate. Uh, lots of cool stuff coming out of that Rumble in the mid lane. 
Yeah, certainly, and it works very well with um, any kind of lockdown the team has, so just because you know the character just inherently works. With, you know, people who are stuck in a spot, you flamethrower, me ult them, and a uh, character that can definitely turn around a fight. Um, for example, you know, we saw um, earlier that what was almost a decisive fight with the Swain pulling everyone in mm -hmm. in that narrow corridor. Rumble functions in that sort of capacity very well, where everyone's just kind of stuck and. And it's not a case of you can always avoid fights like that, too. You know, sometimes you have to take fights in weird spots like that. And you have specialists who can really turn things around, even games when you're very far behind, like we saw in the last one. Uh, you know, it's uh, plays like that that you can always count on. Well, not always, but you're going to try and count on at least. Yeah, that's the type of character that can really turn around a game, even from a little bit behind, because those, those abilities like that Rumble Alt are just so efficient mm -hmm. uh, when you're able to hit it on so many members of a, of a team in a, in a quarter like that. Um, I'll ask you again uh, at the start of this game. What do you guys, or what do you think the uh, the keys to success for both of these teams are, are going to be? I'm going to go back once again, and this is uh, sort of I'm repeating myself here. I'm really <laughs> looking to see what the Mordekaiser does this time around. Now they don't know what he's doing because he was so instrumental through most of the game. Are they going to be able to shut him down? And if you do shut a Mordekaiser down, how is that going to be different from the Mordekaiser that was rampaging throughout the entire game? Mm. Yeah, I think for um, for Pine, it'll be interesting to, to see how that bot lane goes as well. Uh, that Aphelios Renata is, is, a, is a bot lane that I, I don't even know if I've seen yet um, with just how new both of those champions are. Yeah. So it'll be cool to see how that dynamic goes. And then having the Malphite in the top lane and the Rumble in the mid lane aren't super resource intensive characters. Uh, so I imagine they'll have to you know, play towards that bot side if they want to see some success here. Uh, and I suppose this goes without saying, but the, um, the Camille, that can't be allowed to get going. Um, yeah. It's one of those, it's a kind of character the game is going to start to revolve around if the laning phase is too good. She just sort of gets to a point where she's got so much mobility and so much damage that your options for counterplay essentially become limited. It's, it's almost like your counterplay is to ensure she doesn't get going. So uh, we'll see how that one plays out. But also, as you mentioned, the bottom lane is uh, very weird with that kind of a Felios uh, Renata. Thing. I'm not really personally sure how to assess that one. It's, it's kind of like non-standard characters while still you know, firmly within their roles. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, both of those champions being relatively fragile. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see how that plays out. Um, I do think that one answer to that Camille could, as you mentioned, be that Mordekaiser. Mm -hmm. um, having the like inbuilt challenging smite that's like effectively an exhaust plus like extra true damage um i feel like most of the time i end up playing jungle at like jungle mordekaiser like i end up being able to deal duel the top laners just because you you have so many extra stats in your alt yep. and then you just ha yeah you have a, a uh, an exhaust basically built into one of your your smites which is just so strong for those duels yeah, I, I suppose if, if both those characters are going head to head, c you know, assuming everything else is equal, kind of equal farm, equal skill, you know, equal level, essentially, I suppose. Um, I, I think I do favor Mordekaiser just sort of brute forcing into it. I mean, this prospect of a, a fed Camille still very much scares me. It's but, uh, terrifying. <laughs> but yep. uh, if everything's equal, yeah, Mordekaiser can probably just punch through that in a very basic sort of I'm bigger than you sort of sense. So. Yeah, and we haven't talked about it a whole lot, but that Rengar is going to be still roaming around there. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. Oh, sorry, the, the Mordekaiser and the Camille are on the same team. I'm getting the, the teams mixed up. Oh, yeah, there we go. Uh, well, that solves that problem. There we go. OK, so now what is your answer for the Camille besides, I guess, the, the, the Malphite? Like, you've got a good amount of CC. Um, you've got the, the Renata to kind of protect the Aphelios, but you don't have a ton to, to deal with that Camille. Fed Rengar. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Get Rengar fed early game because uh, he's an absolute terror in that stage. Now, again, this is solo queue considerations. Not, you know, as relevant to uh, this sort of organized team play, especially in the finals here. Um, I've always found that in solo queue, Rengars get fed early 
and you think that team is going to win because he's taking all the kills and you have like a 20 and 3 Rengar and then somewhere you know around the 30 minute mark he stops doing things mm -hmm. um, so th that is you know to a degree it's it's still raw math that we're talking about here so it is a consideration that Pine Tree is going to have to be paying attention to but uh, certainly if a Rengar is doing that well through the mid game in this sort of context I imagine Pine Tree around him would also be doing relatively well and they'd be able to actually you know take advantage of that sort of thing so um, uh, for their sake, uh, I mean, you really want any everyone fed on your team, but uh, Rengar might be a thing to look forward to uh, from the early to mid game. Yeah, a few interesting things to, to start off here, just on the, the runes and items here. Um, Bad Woman with this Galio, starting with the boots, um, the Predator boots, and four potions. Uh -huh. uh, looking to get that roaming started real early here from that Galio. And then from our, our good friend, the Mordekaiser Jungle, instead of going Ghost this game, going Smite Ignite. Smite Ignite, right. um, which is Which is intense. You're going to be much better in some of these duels, um, but you might not be able to stick to people quite as much. Um, not much for gap closers on the side of Pine Tree, though. Um, characters, when they get inside that Death Realm, might, uh, that might be a pick for that. You, know? you can't get away from Mordekaiser anyways. You may as well toss an Ignite on them and burn them down with Challenging Smite and the Ignite. Yeah, and then his teammates uh, also have a, just a lot of options to lock people down for you. So you know, just get yourself in. I feel like uh, certainly last game, there was a lot of just kind of... Uh, the fights didn't... They dragged out in a long sense because of the sustain, but they didn't kind of uh, traverse too much area. So spatially, not wasn't quite as necessary to perhaps flash. Speaking of flash, there's two down right now. Yeah, it does get that taunt out, Ooh. and yeah, even through the flash, Astrolift going to try and put out some damage there, but um, just too much coming out between that Mordekaiser and that Galio. That's a lot of early CC. Yeah, I don't, I don't care who you were playing. You get locked down at level 2 that hard, you're probably going to die. Yeah, and it was really good from the Galio as well. Um, was getting pushed in by the Rumble, but kind of pulled those creeps off to the side. Knew that his Mordekaiser was doing those chickens. Um, signaled to the jungler to, you know, hey, he's pushed up. He has to be here. Uh, let's just both commit to this. So first blood going over to Bad Woman. Yeah, I don't know, just from a matchup perspective, I feel like this is especially given that uh, early death there, Astralith might be in for an annoying time against a uh, you know, Galio who's going to probably specialize in terms of uh, anti-AP damage. Is that Rengar jumping in? Oh, uh, man, yeah, all of that early CC. Oh, my goodness, the W heal healing for so much for Kempson. That Rengar uh, oh, is going to get the smite off on the on the crab, is going to heal quite a bit. Jumps back to the crab, is going to stay alive here. And uh, the fight is going to stop with Rengar taking that kill. Pine Tree getting themselves on the board. Good use of that survivability there. Yeah, barely keep himself up with the heal and uh, the heal and the smite. So it's a good double heal here. And mm -hmm. uh, bottom side looking to perhaps aggress, but uh, no, nothing. You know, there was farm to be had. You can't fight during you know farm. These are eighty carries. So yeah, Rengar getting quite low doing that red buff is going to be kiting it around. That's, uh, uh, that's dangerous. I think he can barely. Yeah, yep, he's there he goes. Uh, yeah, I just saw his health bar ticking down. I was like, is he going to be okay? Uh, but does manage to. That, that would be such a shame, you know, watching him do so well in that fight against other players. He barely keep himself up with all these fancy moves and just gets taken out by a red buff. But Look at that bad woman again on, on the uh, the Galio here. First buy with that first blood. Goes back and buys swiftness huh. boots. Uh, so we're seeing, really wanted to get around on the map, uh, making sure that you can get the most out of that taunt because it slows you down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, definitely going to be trying to make some plays here on the map. Not even really looking to harass. So obviously, he's kind of a usually or mostly a short range champion. But uh, I guess we didn't really talk about the possibility of the Galio ult, which might be coming in here. He's kind of roaming bottom, looking for it, but backs off. It is a it is a pretty impactful ult. You know, we were discussing about major points of the game. Could even come down to a Galio ult. Is it's a very hard thing to anticipate at all times. Doesn't matter how aware you are of the various factors and. You know what's going on in the game, much like something is going on right here. Yeah, Jinx putting down those chompers, forcing Renata to go up. Um, going to burn the flash for out of the Yon the Leona is going to get the E. Um, Renata actually walking right back in towards the um, towards the. Okay, um, it does end up getting the revive on herself, but does not get out. Um, the Jinx getting very low in the bush here. Uh, Kempson is living, is going to take another one. So big win there for Pine Tree. Uh, I was watching the Renata like walk right in, yeah. and I was like, what is going on here? And I saw the Rengar, and I was like, oh, I see. Um, did get the revive out on herself, but um, I believe it was the Mordekaiser who, 
who died first there. Yeah, he went um, down fairly. It was surprising. I thought <gasps> he was... Ooh. We might have foreshadowed that. Yeah. <laughs> Another very clean fight from, from Kemsen, but then, yeah, you... Uh, you try and take that camp, and you don't have that much sustain anymore. Oh, uh, guys, who's got the smite? Oh, he okay, okay. So red team will take the dragon. Just a little bit of a trip back to base for Kemsen. Not a huge worry there. You know what came into play there that we were talking about earlier? The lack of the flash on the part of the good Samaritan. He wasn't able to flash over the wall to steal it with a smite. Since uh, Kempson was dead, there was no smite available. So had he taken, he'd have been psychic and known what was going to happen and taken flash. That could have been a potentially free dragon for them. <laughs> that was a free kill for a car. Yeah, Carr just a master of duels here. And the Galio is going to take the CC. Yeah, you may have a lot of armor, uh, but you are not tanky to this AP damage. Um, moving up there from Bad Woman with that Predator. I wonder, what actually, you know, I don't want to dwell on this too much, but I wonder what happened there with the <laughs> Kempson dying to the dragon. It was perhaps a miscommunication with the Rumble, who should have gone in and tanked, but... Uh yeah, I also saw the smite, but I don't know whether the smite had just come up when he died. Maybe he was trying to save it for the actual kill of the dragon, didn't want to burn it for the heal and then potentially have it stolen. But yeah, it's only, you know, level 4, level 5 Rengar, you're only going to be taking a, a, you know, little bit of an extended recall. Sometimes those monsters are tough, you know, you can't sell them short. Oh my goodness, Leona with the hex flash in. We are going to get the Galio ult as well. Um... Looked like trying to make something happen, but it, it looked a, a little bit desperate. They um, they didn't get a whole lot out of it. That Renata pushing the Leona back, um, having great effect there. Did Leona use her ult in that last fight? Or She's level 4. Oh, right, right of course. Oh, so she, yes, she right, was was definitely did not use her ult. It was the Galio. It looked kind of like there was this big circle. I was like, that looks weird. Why? Right, of course, Galio also creates a big circle there. Yep. So. Renata walking straight forward at this Leona very confidently. Squishy, level 6 already on the Aphelios, does have both of those good guns for the combat. Uh, does have those uh, those shurikens traveling around now. Takes out two. Mordekaiser's walking in. Mordekaiser does have his ult, and he ults Renata. Renata pushing him back. He is, um, I mean, must be pushing right to the edge of the circle there. Yeah, does eventually take down the Renata. Uh, now, how are you going to get away with this <laughs> from this Galio with the uh, Swiftness Boots? He doesn't have cooldowns up, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, his taunt was uh, used earlier, so unfortunately that was not available for him. Otherwise, that would have been a pretty unpleasant spot for Pine Tree, I imagine. Here comes uh, Sira, though. This is looking a lot better for Pine Tree already. Certainly. Uh, I feel like you've got two of your, your win conditions that Aphelios, like, starting to, to go now, and then the... Uh, the Rengar has gotten some gold with those two kills, three assists. Uh, I'm excited to see where this one goes for Pine Tree. It's actually uh, fairly interesting how it's CS is relatively even. If you kind of consider lanes across the game, mm -hmm. CS is extremely close. Between both teams, it's probably only off by less than 10. So good, uh, good even play here for the most part. Looking forward to perhaps a, a slightly longer one where both teams are able to... Uh, Show us what they can do both in the, or I guess, in the early, mid, and late game. Yeah, I'm a little worried about Squishy here down in the bot lane. Um, is going to be farming up alone while uh, Bamboos goes up and helps out with that Rift Herald. Uh, Leona would be one of the champions that could potentially dive. A, uh, well, we're actually going to see the fight between the, the Rengar and the Mordekaiser here. Rengar, um, not going to... Ooh, is going to get out, actually. Yeah, Renata with the, uh, yet again, that clutch pull. <laughs> and the Malphite ult at the very last second, just to make sure that that, uh, that Rengar does get out safely. Rumble's still pushing in here. We'll see if he can do anything. I don't think so. I think it's just going to peter out. But uh, you know, making his presence known, a bit of a threat. Yeah, it's um, when you're thinking about that Galio with Predator, Swiftness, Boots, and the Galio ult, it's kind of hard to, to match those roams. Mm -hmm. But that was really good for Master Lift, pushing out that lane and, and making his presence known in the bottom lane. So it was also an interesting um, invade earlier by Kempson there. I'm not, not sure. He got out of it with really fancy moves. And this is a, a concept I talk about sometimes. When people get away with these really fancy sort of highlight plays, like, I'll jump here, jump here, and then I'm out sort of thing. I, I feel like a lot of highlight plays, unfortunately, are a result of uh, needing to show off when you didn't have to in the first place. Like, it's you have to do something fancy to get out of a bad situation you created yourself. So it's sort of like this negative flip side to highlight plays. Oh, oh my goodness, that... That um, 
I believe that's... Oh, I used to know all the gun names. I don't anymore. Uh, the green gun, <laughs> uh, hitting that long-range Q, getting that damage out from the Aphelios, uh, is going to get that solo kill, basically, on the uh, the low-health Minju. Looking like he's in a bit of trouble himself at the moment. Okay, he'll come in as well. Yeah, Rengar was waiting in the bush there, but wasn't expecting the whole team of Siaquam. Uh, is going to slowly make his way out there now. Um going to lose the Renata as well, but it's only going to be two for um, quite a few alts used from, from Siaquam. That's basically their whole team's alts besides the Mordekaiser. Uh, but they will be rewarded with a few kills and that dragon, most likely. I don't think um, Pine Tree is really in a place to contest this at the moment. Rumble I mean, really In the Death to. Realm. Yeah, it does get some damage out. Oh, and Oh, Kemsen jumps in. It looked it looked good for a moment there, but when the Leon is the one that goes down, you're still dealing with a lot of damage for being a low health Rengar. We're dealing with respawns, in fact, like bottom lane has actually come back. This fight has lasted so long. We'll see if this dragon is still indeed free. Position looking pretty good given the yeah, the jungler was dead, so yeah, those cool. getting it. Chompers buying some time as well. Nope. Yep. It was a very sort of unusual fight there. I liked um, Bad Woman's movements there, where he was kind of uh, hovering around with his taunt, and he was seeing that one kill was secured, so he was ensuring that actually both uh, taunts went off on... Uh, I believe he also he grabbed... He grabbed two people. I think it was Renata and uh, Kempson simultaneously, and Kempson was forced to flash out as a result. Mm. And, of course, that flash was not available later, and he ended up dying. So one might say that sort of uh, doing those small things in these fights lead up to situations later on. These you know, kills don't happen in a vacuum. Uh, you have to keep creating situations and denying resources over time. And eventually, you work your opposition into a, po a point where they can't react and they don't have enough tools to deal with what you're doing to them. <laughs> Kemsen walks in the lane to drop the Rift Herald. <laughs> Galio just walks up, bops him on the head, walks away. It's just like, okay, you can't do any damage to me while you're dropping this. May as well get a hit in. Good old tanks. Uh, that's why I like playing them. Yep. Um, looking at uh, the side of Siaquam, um, it's not the Camille who's taken off. It's yet again this Mordekaiser. Um, first actually going Riley's um, oh, yeah, yeah. for that sticking power. So maybe not needing that ghost this game um, and just going with the uh, the Smite Ignite, knowing that he's going to have the, the stick with the Riley's. Yeah, I mean, imagine, I feel like he, he can probably rely on his teammates to just start things. Uh, Geech mm -hmm. coming in with the uh, Leona ult. Then you get on top of that, you have a follow-up potentially with Bad Woman on the Galio. And then there's a sort of this tertiary engage, then you have just more guys are walking in very slowly. And, uh, you know, once he's in, you know, I, I feel like at that point, uh, if things have gone that perfectly, you know, that textbook, um, Siakum's going to be in a very, very good spot in any sort of fight. Yes, definitely. So we've hit the 14-minute mark here. Plates are down. Uh, so these turrets are going to be starting to get a little bit more fragile here. Um, Kemsen is waiting in this bot lane here. Um, and so is Bamboos. I don't know whether they, they know that the Renata is there, uh, but Jinx is alone under this tower, and there is a Rengar nearby. Galio is moving in here as well. They're going to get the Galio ult, but it is too late. Um, going to get that ultimate with the, the I believe that's Crescendum, the red one, um, heals for quite yep. a bit on that Aphelios, so is going to bring himself back to basically full health. Uh, Rumble Alt comes out, does a little bit of damage, and the three-person Leona Alt is going to disengage that fight. Um, that turret is still quite fragile. They're going to get pushed off of it. Very good ult there to save uh, the good Samaritan's life there, most likely. I don't think he was in a very good spot until that stunned them all up. Gave him a bit of time to sort of let that CC wear off and walk out. And uh, that was an interesting case of uh, the Galio ult. Um, it was kind of very similar to the principle of the Shen ult I was talking about earlier. It's not instantaneous. Mm -hmm. If you have a squishy AD carry being bared down on by an assassin, it doesn't matter if they're under a tower. It's not like the tower gives the person survivability. It's simply sort of an offensive kind of uh, counter answer sort of thing. So uh, uh, Ninja simply ceasing to exist before uh, the support can come in from Bad Woman. Yeah, and Rengar with this uh, this Gore Drinker finish now is starting to get a little bit scary. Uh, he's going to be put in that place where, yeah, if you catch out that 1 in 4 Jinx, or maybe even this Camille, who still hasn't had a, a Mythic finished yet, um, 
there could be some some prime targets for this Rengar to pick out. Yeah, certainly. Um, speaking of the Camille, it's definitely not the kind of situation uh, I was talking about earlier where, you know, the Camille is going to take over the game when she's doing well. This is a very sort of middling, not doing poorly, but definitely the game it hasn't reached the point where it's revolving around the character. So it could still happen, but uh, time is taken on that to a degree, I feel. Yeah, Akara has been really impressive in both of these games from, from Pine Tree. I don't... Um, really expect a whole lot from a Tom Kench or a Malphite. Mm -hmm. uh, but both of these games, just kind of like throwing it down in these 1v1s uh, and making sure that that presence is felt, even from these tanks. It's a, a rock that uh, his team can rely on, I suppose. Mm -hmm. That's what the top lane's there for. It's pushing in here. Game uh, kind of quieting down for the first time in a little while here. People just kind of hovering. Potentially looking to play a ram, perhaps. There is a dragon, of course, spawning in about a minute, so there is that being set up to degree. That pull missed Ooh. everyone. Looked like it was going to land on three people for a second there, but that last second reaction, everyone just getting out of the way. Yeah, the Q still hurt Squishy pretty bad, but um, you know, Felios, you've got some uh, some sustain there. Speaking of a Felios, does just finish that call, um, so there's going to be a short injection of uh, cash there for Squishy. I we'll have to see what he does with it. Looks like um, Siakum is fully willing to concede this dragon. Uh, they're rotating eventually here to grab the um, Rift Herald. I don't know if they did it quick enough to get it for free. Yeah, Rumble Alt, Malphite Alt, these are things that are very scary in these these fights over these objectives. Rengar's not going to be around, but Malphite only hits on Camille. Rumble Alt goes down only on Camille as well. Uh, Squishy is alone at the back, is going to go into the Death Realm. Um, they are shooting down this uh, this Malphite, who does just flash over the wall and get the kill on the Jinx. Um, Aphelios will end up going down to that Mordekaiser, but not without a fight. So it ends up being 3-for-3 three three with Siakum taking the Rift Herald, and uh, maybe they, I spoke too soon. Did they pick it up? I don't think they did. I think it's yes, just si Camille has it. Oh, you grabbed it. Okay. Just in the midst of all that chaos there. Good job. Yes. <laughs> For a second, I was worried. Like, wait, you did it, but no one did it. But it's all fine. Yeah, so it was a it was a four v five for the majority of that. Um, right. I think Rengar got involved at the end, but um, mm. coming out three for three in a four v five is is pretty good for Pine Tree, um, even if they don't end up getting the Herald there. Orissa, in the meantime, also got a good amount of damage on the top side tower. That's why um, he was a little bit late coming into the fight. He was obviously there earlier than uh, Kempson on the Rengar, but um, they also got a little bit aside from just the Rift Herald. <laughs> Bad woman coming in with the, the Predator. We'll just kind of say hello and goodbye. Uh, moves very quickly with that Swiftness plus Predator. Um, and then the Everfrost to kind of add on to that for a little bit of extra CC. Not that Galio needs a, a whole lot yeah, of extra yeah. CC, but um, it sure feels good. It's also just a move amusing watching that character motor around the map like that. Yeah, it's interesting because gargoyles are supposed to be like the the sentinels that yeah. like aren't moving, and, and now Galio is this like <laughs> like literally like a motorboat. He just goes around and you know just cruises. Oh, here comes the uh, the alt there, double alt. Yeah, Camille with that Triforce now. Oh, is gonna trade. I was gonna say that Triforce power spike without having any armor or anything on Rumble like that looked painful. Uh, but does flash under that turret and end up dying to the minions in that last tower shot. Oh, Rengar actually killed uh, that woman there surprisingly quickly. Defensive ult's coming in here. Renata ult does <laughs> end up hitting the Leona, just causing her to walk towards the Jinx, which is exactly where she wants to be. Mordekaiser are getting involved here, uh, but will be severely outnumbered. We'll get the Renata in the Death Realm, um, but will get taken down by the rest of the team. And they are in the exact right spot to just move straight to the Baron. Um, that's... I don't know if that's just really unlucky in part of Siakum or Pine Tree, just next level, you know, 5D chess, knowing they want that fight right as this is going to happen. And I believe they're going to take that for free. There's no way Siakum's going to contest this. Yeah, and this is scary. I imagine after a fight like that... Um, and then getting the Baron, I'm actually very excited to see what Aphelios is going to pick up here because uh, that is a gold injection and a half. 
I, I would like to once again point out that that Baron timing was literally down to the second. The team fight ended and then Baron <laughs> spawned. So, I mean, I imagine to agree it's probably a combination of things where they know it's spawning, so you know both teams are kind of hovering. It's like, oh, well, we got to pay attention to this, and it's just it ended up being this bloody brawl that I don't necessarily think both teams, either team, really wanted per se, and it happened. But uh, definitely Pine Tree making the most of it there. Yeah, Felios moving away from base now. Went from zeal and like a long sword to having the full runins plus vamp scepter plus crit cloak. <laughs> uh, so that is a very powerful Aphelios. Um Already scales very well into the late game, and with these amount of items, he is going to be a terror in the next fight. And it looks like not. There's not a lot of just armor as a stat. I mean, there's bits and pieces here, and there, but there's not a lot coming in from Seaquim. So that character is going to hurt even more. Oh, but yeah, they jump right on top of him. Geech using that hex flash over the wall to start off that fight. Rumble Alt trying to help out the team is not going to get there. They burn a few. Few abilities there. The Galio alt on the Mord or on the Malphite, but he is able just to unstoppable force his way out of there. Yeah, no amount of damage can uh, correct positioning, I suppose. So. Ooh, Rengar with that Baron buff, saying, "Hey, even if you're fighting my teammates, like you're gonna have to address this sooner or later. I've got, I've got powered creeps." Um, Malphite might be caught out again here. Um, is in the death realm, can't run too far, oh. and yeah, th with between the 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 burn from from Malphite's passive, or sorry, from Mordekaiser's passive, and then the uh, the slow from the Rileys. You're not getting away from that. For a split second, I was wondering why is he standing there, and then it you know clicked immediately. And I was like, oh right, right, Mordekaiser's standing. Yeah. <laughs> Poor guy. No yeah, I mean go. he's it, Malphite's a pretty slippery character when he has that alt up, uh, but you know when you burn the the alt trying to get away one time, you got to be a little bit careful. Another instance of uh, just keep burning the resources on the enemy team and deny them options. Eventually you keep doing it, it'll add up into something important like a kill or perhaps a dragon. Yeah, Siaquam claiming that uh, that objective bounty there. Rengar alt gets interrupted by the choppers. Uh, Leona quite low though. Rengar is going to continue moving forward. Uh, is going to get a bit of the heal from his W and the Gore Drinker. Uh, he's going to try and stay in this one. Looks like they're still kind of looking for a fight here, but I can't imagine one happens. That was, uh, once again, sort of impressive sustain coming out of Kempson there. Now when you think of Rengar, you know, you, your people are aware of his, you know, sustain capabilities. But often it's played in a very kind of basic, the assassin, they jump in, you kill the person kind of thing. But he's been doing a very good job of jumping in and keeping himself alive. Which is also, you know, a pretty important uh, skill for an assassin. Perhaps their primary job is to kill, but, you know, it's a really nice secondary to not die while you're doing it. Yeah, and very good, um, very good awareness on on the the W as well. Like when to actually press that to get the maximum amount of healing. Mm -hmm. I, when I play Rengar, it's definitely like you know jump in and press my buttons, and then I, <laughs> I I get somebody, but I might just immediately die. But yeah, using that W masterfully in order to, to get the most amount of heal. So just kind of from a pressure perspective, you know, obviously Pine Tree is. Uh, we can talk about that later. We've got a fight here. Yeah, Rumble is not in a great spot. Does end up getting the Renata W and reviving, but uh, will not get a kill. So both of them will go down. Uh, the fight between Kempson and uh, the Good Samaritan does um, end up just kind of petering out as they both uh, decide to back off. It's a very kind of strange way for this game to be playing out. Um, I was actually about to talk about the concept of the uh, the pressure from Pine Tree just generally in most situations feels very oppressive. Like they're just kind of largely going around what they want to do. And what's really keeping Siaquam in is these strange little picks here. They almost feel like unforced errors by the part of Pine Tree who are, I mean, it looks good when the split push is working and even if they lose, they get a tower from the Rengar or something like that. But at the same time, it's just, this game is feeling a lot more skirmishy probably than they want it to be. I feel like they could probably push in kind of like this, maybe not like this specifically, but that sort of idea where you kind of maybe brute force into them a bit more going a bit pie-shaped for them there at the moment. But. I mean, they burned a lot on the Malphite. Rumble does get a good alt off there on three. Uh, they are going to take out the Leona first. Uh, Astro is going to die in the Death Realm from the Mal or from the Mordekaiser there. Uh, Malphite trying to slow down this uh, this strong <laughs> Mordekaiser, and they're going to let Squishy walk in <laughs> with that long-range gun. 
and uh, Good Samaritan knows that he is not getting away from that. Kempson is moving in here. There are still three in this area. Uh, Camille Alt goes down, and Kempson will most likely with it. Uh, Shutdown Gold going over to Bad Woman. Okay, yeah, I can't bit off a bit more than he could chew there. I was saying, yeah, you know, it's, I would like to see some a bit more brute force aggression. Maybe, maybe not that degree, um, but I like the idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pine Tree just going to reset here with the uh, the gold from some of those fights there. Um, we got three items out of the Aphelios, uh starting to get quite scary. Um, Jinx trailing behind a little bit. Spawning up those chicken birds, the most important objective in the game. Mm -hmm. Got to make sure the AD carry has as much money as humanly possible. Yeah, and then... Uh, also kind of want to highlight Bamboos here. Uh, Bamboos, you know, had a little bit of a tough game last time on the uh, on the Lulu. But this game looking a lot nicer for uh, for Bamboos. There have been a lot of times where he's been using that uh, that Renata. I believe it's the Q. I, I New champion, so it's a little bit hard to tell. But the ability where you root one person, then move them into another. Uh, has been yeah. using that very, very well to set up these plays uh, and has looked a lot more influential than, than the, the Lulu, which is a champion that I, I think very highly of. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, it's a really good point. Um, kind of Lulu, maybe not necessarily, I, I don't think straightforward is the right answer for it, but more traditional, certainly. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of how she impacts the game is a bit more obvious, but the Bamboos with this kind of weird pick has uh, done a very good job. Of, uh, I've enjoyed actually seeing the character um, used to good effect. And they are kind of pressuring around this Baron now here from Pine Tree. Uh, Pine Tree is just going to start it up. Uh, Ophelio is with two pretty strong guns for fights and for healing. You can see that overshield that he's receiving both from, from uh, overheal itself and from that bloodthirster that he's now holding on to. Um, and the fight looks like it's starting off here. Yeah, let's see if I'm, uh, have, uh, back. They haven't taken much damage here so they're both teams are pretty good position at the very least they've baited out the teleport from uh, Orissa so that is not going to be available going forward for the next few minutes but yeah no alts used yet uh, that Malphite rumble Ooh. combo Ooh, they're gonna pick off bamboos yeah just a little bit too far forward and uh, we'll go down very quickly a car okay the rumble lock goes down on three lots of damage going out onto the side of Siaquam um, Squishy is going to be alive. Oh, is not going to end up surviving. Even under that turret, um, is not safe from that Mordekaiser pull. Um, and this is starting to look bad for Pine Tree. Yeah, that was a really unfortunate situation there, where I guess it was just a miscommunication of the team being way too strung out on a, essentially retreat. Uh, I mean, retreat's not even the right word. There was sort of nothing happening. Both teams sort of casually backing off. And Pine Tree backing up a little bit too casually, perhaps. You know, you kind of always got to be paying attention, um, especially when something like a Rengar can jump on you. There's just so much mobility. Or, excuse me, not a mobility, um, a Rengar, a, um, a Camille. Camille, yeah. Yeah, yeah Kemsen there trying to be a little bit of a nuisance, trying to just, you know, take any amount of attention off of his, his crumbling base. <laughs> um, we could actually see... No, it doesn't look like Pine Tree was going for it. I was just getting flashbacks to the first game where it was like... Um, one team, you know, goes for the Baron, it doesn't go super well, and then, you know, they could just go right back to it. And it looks like they're <laughs> kind of going to, to set it up. They're not running towards it with the same conviction that uh, Siakum did in game one, but it um, looks very similar. Yeah, very, very kind of similar situation. Um, I also think it's probably perhaps noteworthy that despite how poorly that fight went for Pine Tree, uh, Squishy... Squishy's ult with the, I believe it was the Infernum, did a lot of damage. It nearly turned that fight around, but uh, mm -hmm. it was a bit of, little bit of too little too late kind of situation. So if that can get landed in a better sort of situation, um, you know, it's definitely something that the fight could end up revolving around. Yep. Squishy going to be picking up that red buff, anticipating a fight here happening. Want a little bit of that regen. The car ends up not... Uh, yeah, does not get his flash across that wall. Was trying to save the ult, and it looks like Bamboos and a car going to go down. Rengar is split pushing, but can, can Kemsen afford to stay down there? I don't think he can. He's got a back. Um, another situation of just simply an unforced error. Pine Tree was looking so strong in terms of when they were clustered and forcing things, but time after time, individuals are being caught out, and this may be the story of not simply yeah. the game, but the set itself. 
Rumblewald is going to do quite a bit of damage. Aphelios with some of those AoE guns, this would be the team that could do it. Uh, Aphelios is getting chased away by the Mordekaiser in the Death Realm, is going to take him down. And the rest of Pine Tree is going to fall alongside. So Siaquam going to take this series 2-0. Uh, very solid play. That was very good. Siaquam, congratulations on winning this best of three, two to nothing. Capitalizing on, once again, Pine Tree individual members. Sort of, uh, again, just individual people being out of position, and that ends up costing them, unfortunately. There was very good play overall from both sides, but that ended up being the difference. Um, just, you know, you can only give up that kind of situation so many times before, well, your Nexus blows up, so. Yeah, I mean, we got some good League of Legends on both teams. I, I was glad that we were able to highlight each of those players at least a, a couple of times. Yeah. Everybody kind of got their licks in, uh, but uh, Siaquam with the superior team play, superior, you know, rotational play a little bit there, so good for them. All right, so we are going to be giving away the, the award here to Siaquam for, for, you know, winning the finals here, so we're going to move over to them. All right, well, again, congratulations to our victors, and thank you very much for everyone uh, for all playing and watching. I've had a blast sure. commentating. All right, today. thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming here and being here tonight, and congratulations to our, I guess now, back-to-back -back championships after the uh, fall win, but the BC School of Sports Spring Season League of Legends champion, Siakwam. Why don't you guys come around the front of the table? While we're taking pictures, just want to again say thank you to uh, our partners at Play Versus for all the work that they do in, in putting these uh, opportunities together for our student athletes. As well, I want to say thank you to the Gaming Stadium and to Home Key for hosting us here today. So thank you to everyone involved in putting this on, and congratulations again to Siakwam, and we'll see you uh, next year. Try and make it three in a row.